It's time for Windows Weekly. Microsoft sprung it on us, and it turns out Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley were sandbagging us last week. They had the new Surface Book 2, but they couldn't talk about it. Now they can. New hardware from Microsoft. Finally, the release of the Fall Creators update and Cuphead. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 540, recorded Wednesday, October 18th, 2017. Smell the baguettes. Windows Weekly is literally brought to you by Sonic, Twit's 10 gigabit fiber internet service provider. Join Sonic's internet revolution as they bring fast, affordable internet, phone, and TV to homes and businesses all over California. Visit sonic.com slash twit to sign up for their service and receive your first month free. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why the Quicken Loans team created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash windows. And by Betterment, the largest independent online financial advisor for a free five-minute investment review, helping you assess your investment accounts, tax strategies, fees, and risk exposure. Visit betterment.com slash windows. No sign-up required. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news for Microsoft with these two here. Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com at ZDNet. And Paul Thorat from Thorat.com at Thorat.com. And we are here to celebrate the return mm -hmm. of fall. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It, it I think we had like the first frost. <laughs> the first frost. Yeah. The frost is on the pumpkin, as they say. Yep. yep. In beautiful upper New York State. So hello, you two. You're back home. Hello. Paul's back yeah. here in his environs. Mary Jo Poli. <laughs> Mary Jo Poli. Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> Posted a Chipotle. Mary Chipotle posted <laughs> a picture of the notebook mm -hmm. where they keep all the beers she drank. On I her did. Instagram. Did you see that? That was quite oh. a long That's... list. Yeah. So I got my notebook? second mug. I got, got my second, second mug um, this weekend at a different bar at a One Mile House. But it took me four years to drink all those beers. I didn't know. So you you don't just go to Rattle and Hum. No, no. You know, you have to diversify. Do you? You do. You do. You don't always want to drink in the same place. No. For one thing, it's embarrassing when the bar seat matches your butt. <laughs> so here's and everyone the, knows your name. Yeah, like you're going to bring up a picture. Yeah, I'm curious <laughs> Look, at too. Look at this. Look at oh, this. <laughs> 100 unique beers. So they so one mile is like rattle and hum. If you do that, they give you a uh, special engraved mug. They do, and it's a it's a silver tankard that they hang up on the wall and has your name on it. Hold um, on a second. I think uh -oh. I see a duplicate. <laughs> no. <laughs> I see. Other and half. Uh, you also have to wear this jacket. Um, like they yep. have this. Like at the Yale jacket. Club. Yes, yeah, like and you have to put it on. I'm sorry, sir. And, yeah, it is. It's like the, one of those jackets, right? Super itchy wool. Wait, wait, like the whole fur. time you're at the place, you have to wear it? No, you just have to wear it when you get your mug, oh. and they take your picture, and they oh. put it on their website. And, oh, it's on their um, website? Oh, I got it. It's a whole that. thing. I don't know if they put it on the website yet, but yeah. So, yeah, so, now I have a second mug. It, okay, you, you cut off the picture at the bottom, but it says 100% slogs, no pumpkin. I'm thinking spice. Oh, it was um the my last beer was uh, was sloop no pumpkin which was just an IPA oh. that didn't have pumpkin. <laughs> sloop no pumpkin. Right. And then there's a kitty cat, and that's yeah. sriracha. sriracha. It is. And uh, so hmm. that's the hundreds. I get it. Ninety nine, yep. one hundred. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So then they give you the jacket and they're like, "You want to wear it for the rest of the time you're in here?" I'm like, "No, it's itchy, it's itchy. and it's hot." And it's, <laughs> it's almost as prestigious as the Masters. It is. It's like right. the green jacket. You got the exactly. jacket. Exactly. Yep. It's the IPA colored jacket. <laughs> <laughs> All your hops are right where you left them. Oh yep. my God. In the in the tweed of this coat. 
So yeah. I got to find the One Mile House website. Yeah, I don't know if I'm on the website see, yet. They there. said they were going to put my picture At in least there. we'll be able to see the, uh, the, <laughs> the other people in their, in their itchy coats. Yeah. Um, we're, we oh, all had to wear. You're in the OMH Society. Oh, I am. that is yeah. the ugliest jacket I've ever seen. It is, right? <laughs> it's a houndstooth jacket. Wait, do they have one oh. jacket and they make everyone wear the same, same jacket? jacket? Yep. That doesn't they seem do. very sanitary. Well, no, I mean, that's why that I wore guy. for like, I wore for one second and took it off. Yeah, sure. That is the ugly. It's a houndstooth check jacket. <laughs> Let's go all the way to the bottom. Uh, you, it says, I remember sixty three. This is a this is a very restricted. It is a prestigious club. In fact, I think there were more masters winners than there are yeah. winners <laughs> of this jacket. Wow. Yep. Kevin Soriano. <laughs> Tyrone Nickens. Jenny Zhu. So that's a yep, nice I'm not tanker, there though. That is not a bad silver tankard you earn there. It's not. Some real uh, hipster action going on in these photos, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I've got to be the oldest one by far in, Tyler, in this. Tyler's I'm going to do a twirly mustache. Yeah. Well, I think they look like hipsters because they're wearing a houndstooth jacket. I think anybody, anybody would kind of look a little hipstery in that. Wow. True. Congratulations, Mary Jo. This I know. Look at me racking up awards left and right. <laughs> a true achievement. <laughs> Impressive. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> That's neat. Congratulations. It was fun. It's, yeah. You know what? Something to do. And then you made burrata cheese. I did from scratch. I love burrata. Wow. I know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It was, it was an eventful weekend, guys. Very Impressive. Very impressive. Are you are you giving up hmm. a beer to make cheese? Or I guess they're really the same yeah. thing. Yeah. It, you know, it was funny when I was making the cheese. I'm like, this is like making beer in many ways. <laughs> it is. Hmm. It is. It is. It? Yep. Fermentation. Is there anything it, is? it can't do? I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Intel's new processors based on <laughs> fermentation. fermentation. <laughs> hey, maybe organic <laughs> processors. Big story. Kind of a surprise. Uh, yep. This okay. Week. But, but wait, can we give you the backstory on this yes, too? Yes, please. Okay. So, you know, last week Paul was here and we couldn't really tell you why. Oh. But that day, that very day that we did Windows Weekly, we spent the whole mm -hmm. morning at this NDA event where we <sighs> saw all this stuff. So you knew. And we couldn't talk about it. We couldn't talk about it. It was killing us. <laughs> so frustrating. Oh, man. It was. Yeah. So there's a new yes. Surface Book in town. That's the Actually, one. Actually, I would add uh, to the backstory, I would just point out, too, that uh, this event was touted to us as a Windows 10 Fall Creators Update event. Oh, in fact, they, they, they asked people who had, yeah, people who had still gotten or had still had their Surface devices, Surface Pro devices, whatever, they asked them to bring them in so that Microsoft could put the Fall Creators Update on there. Yep. Now, my opinion is if you need Microsoft to do that, you shouldn't be there in the first place. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but uh, I did. I declined that offer. Um, but yeah. then we went there, and it became clear over time, like uh, everyone from the Surface team was there. Something else going on. I know. Oh, yeah. How and yeah. then we went inside, and there were two devices under wraps, <laughs> under blankets yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, on the stage. Uh, I was like, sitting is... so close to them too. Paul's like, I, I know, dare I like, you go I'm up. Mar I like Mary Jo. I'll distract panels. Just make a run for it. <laughs> wow. We have a runner. Wow. <laughs> Stevie Batiste would have taken you down like a like a cheetah and a gazelle. No kidding. But anyway, um, yeah, it was really a surface event pretty much, right? I mean, there was a showcase it thing was. with Windows 10 stuff, but yep. the Windows 10 part I mean, of the show was very small. Yeah, Donna Sarkar was there. Um which made sense because she is the Windows Insider representative. Mm -hmm. But it, it was weird because when we walked in, we're like, wait, Panos is here and Stevie Batiste. I'm like, you know what? I think we're going to hear about yep. Surface. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was very unexpected. It was. And it was a new Ta -da. Ta -da. Not much to say, really. It was just... Well, what's interesting, first of all, as I remember last week, we spent some time talking about whether Surface was dead as hardware. So... You, right. sure. you had to sit on your hands and say, I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> not, not this month. Yeah, it looks like it might stick around, I maybe. I have some <laughs> interest in keeping it. Oh, I can't <laughs> no, I, I, 
Mary Jo, you don't have a – well, maybe you have one now. You have a Surface Book now, right? Did you, did you get a review yeah. unit or whatever uh, to cut mm -hmm. for the Windows 10 thing? The old um, one, the old Surface Book. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's the same, but it's the same form factor. It's They haven't changed yeah. the body at it all. It is. Um, I, I, there's a weird love-hate thing for me with Surface Book because it obviously has had lots of problems. In fact, I – sent my first one back because it was so broken. The second one I got is unusable. And then I got a performance-based version, and now actually that one is fine. Um, yeah. But I had a lot of problems with it, and it kind of reminds me of the Xbox 360 because I had to keep sending that back to get it fixed for red ring problems. But mm -hmm. despite that, I, I, I love that machine. Like, And I, mm -hmm. I feel the same thing with the Surface Book. There's something about it. It's, it's, it's goofy, and there's you know it's got problems which we can get to. Um, and yet there's something about it. Like, I really feel like it's kind of a neat combination of size, great keyboard, great trackpad, great screen. I don't know. There's something yeah. about it. Well, you know, so it. the the format of our day, um, last week was Panos got up in front of the group of us who were there under NDA and he, he didn't talk about the specs of the, of the new surface book or anything. <laughs> no, he just talked about the way they think about design on the team. And it was kind of a very high level fluffy ish mm -hmm. talk. Um, but one thing fluffy he did say was we know there were a lot of problems with the first surface book. He admitted it. Yeah, like wow. he just said Good. that. And um, he's yeah. like, you know what? And we think we fix them with surface book too. Too and late. I, I already gave mine away. I'm not buying another yeah. one. Sure. I mean, who but, would buy another know, it, one after suffering through the first well, one? Right. A lot of people in my Twitter feed are saying, I want it. Yeah. I have a Surface Book 1 and I want it. Well, one thing has changed is now there's a 13 and a 15. Right. Yeah. So if you Which want a really big further screen. further awesome for me. I love the bigger laptops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't, um, don't. Oh, now I'm worried I'm going to kind of want one. I don't want one. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a weird case of like, no matter how many times you get smacked in the head, you just keep going back for more, you know, and that's my Twitter feed. I mean, it's like. Well, I fully we're, believe we're fresh it won't off be of, as bad as it was. I mean, they've fixed the. No, yeah. no, no. I don't mean it like that. But I mean, it's it's funny how hope spring a, springs eternal. You know, like Windows Phone sure. was a huge disappointment. Uh, supposedly, just killed um, Groove Music. You know, mm -hmm. lots of problems with Surface Book. Oh, there's a new another Surface Book. Here's twenty six hundred bucks, <laughs> Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. You know, like we're we're all we're so willing yeah. to go for it again. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I fall into that category. I want to be really clear about that. I'm not making fun of anybody. Yeah. I, I am absolutely in that crowd. So um, what's new? What's different? What's improved? Well, one thing they say they've improved is the hinge. So it looks the same from the side. There's still the gap with the hinge. But they also yeah. acknowledge in their blog post, you know what? We know when you used the Surface Book originally with touch, it might have been a little unstable. Yes. Yeah. Like tipped over all the time <laughs> yes. and fell over. Yeah. Yes. It might have been. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so they say they made some internal changes to the hinge to make it stiffer so that when you touch it, it won't be like plop, tip over. You know? I, but I think the, you know, the, wobb the wobbliness is one thing, but I, I think the yeah. bigger issue with the hinge is just the unreliability of it, right? Many people, right. I've had yeah. some multiple devices, Brad experiences this, um, it, it, it almost separates on its own, you know? It's yeah. like the marquee mm -hmm. feature of this laptop that the screen comes off and is its own kind of tablet thing is in many ways also the weak point of the whole system because yep. it's got this unique one of a kind, I guess now two of a kind, his system. So they didn't really talk about that part of it, but I hope, I assume as part of that hinge redesign or you know uh, updating or whatever, that they fix that aspect of it as well. It is interesting to double yeah. down on the hinge. They, they Clearly yeah. they believe yeah. that this, so for people who aren't familiar with what we're talking about, this is the Surface Book that looks like a clothespin and you push mm -hmm. a button and you can detach the screen. The screen has its own right. battery. Right. It's The CPU yep. is in the keyboard with a second battery. So it's not like a mm -hmm. Surface Pro keyboard. It's a it's a heavy duty thing. And this is mm -hmm. really kind of a, a laptop with, but it's a convertible laptop, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And the ta the tablet part of these things has gotten lighter. That I think right. is also going to help with the that, I know they said it was thinner. Was it noticeable? Yeah, it was noticeably I, lighter. Okay. Well, yeah, that's definitely. another reason to fix the tippy because that yep. was why part of the reason you had the tippy right. was it, it had a big battery yep. in it. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really light. Even the 15 inch one, which I can't imagine using a 15 inch tablet, um, but it no. was light enough that you could hold it. Um, I just it's I'm surprised fan, they still did the, the detachable. Right. <laughs> 
I never did well, so here, my theory so on that. That's one of the reasons I, I didn't buy another one. I, know. I just never found a right. reason. But Microsoft uh, does what Apple does, and they reuse their designs. They kind of milk them for as long yeah. as they can. So mm -hmm. I, 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 after Surface Laptop came out, I, I sort of thought to myself, you know, a version of the Surface Laptop with a GPU or a version of Surface Book without a removable screen might be the next logical step you know, for this mm -hmm. product line. So I guess it was probably easier for them just to go with the design they had. Yeah, and update um, it. Yeah. And just update it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I asked them that specifically. I'm like, okay, do, do many people, you have the telemetry data. Do many people actually take the tablet off? And they were like, oh, sure. yeah, people do it. And I'm like, I know no one who does it ever. Baloney. So yeah, okay, actually, curious. actually, I will say this. 100% of Surface Book users do, in fact, attach the screen all the time. Because that's the only way to make the system respond again sometimes because <laughs> yeah, true. that that's bulky true. connector, you, sometimes it literally is the detach, right. reattach version of you turn know. it off again, you know, turn yeah. it on again. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, what, but they also did say to me when I said, okay, why do people take it off if they do? And they, they are trying to create this whole workflow where if you're a creative slash designer it's, type person, you might sketch oh, yeah. out your design on the tablet, then attach it. Then create whatever your thing is, create something, and then flip the tablet around to what they call studio mode so that you can just show it to somebody flipped around. So they ha this is why they designed it that way. And I, they say it's – I know. I'm, I, telling, I'm just saying – I disagree. I, I don't part. think that's really <laughs> – I know that's yeah, what that's they say. That's what they say. say. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean that's so why – I like a convertible. I mean I, that's what I use, yeah. right. which is a flip over. Mm -hmm. right. Nothing detaches. It's a little you more can reliable. Have Right. Why not just do a convertible? Yeah, that's well, that's what I ended up doing. Well, here's by the way, here's the two big disadvantages to the thing that she just described, which she's right. They say this is why they supposedly did it. One, mm -hmm. when you detach the screen, you lose most of the battery and all of the GPU. It's gone. So you don't a creative person who might actually need that power yeah. doesn't have it yeah. when it's in tablet mode. It's gone. Like so you've you've neutered the thing right there. So that's one thing. <laughs> The other issue is the studio mode that you're describing where you, mm -hmm. you you pop off the screen, you turn it all the way around, and then you carefully realign it back on the thing and flip it down mm -hmm. onto itself is the most tedious process anyone that could one ever I undergo. I never do. I've, I it's yeah. forget terrible. that you can do that, frankly. Yeah. yeah, and then you're like, oh, I want to use the keyboard. Oh, click, you know, spin it around. <laughs> you know, no, it's, yeah. it's yeah. ridiculous. No. And this, yeah. But see, I think if somebody wants that form factor – a mm -hmm. convertible form factor, they're just going to buy the Surface Pro, right? Well, I, I guess, the, but Except the point the is... power. Yeah, maybe. Right. The Surface uh, so, Pro is not as powerful as the Surface Book? No, they don't have a GPU. Surface, ah. No, Surface Book is the, like, the... They, the what do they call it? One. The, like, dream machine for creatives, right? Oh, wow, not really. But no, I but, See, I feel... No, but I, I mean, way, that's I what they it. say. <laughs> I think it's great. I don't care about any of the creative features, and I think for actual creatives, those features are compromised. I... I it's a bad design. The and it's a self imposed set of problems that were already fixed by convertibles. What Microsoft mm -hmm. should have made was the ultimate convertible. Microsoft's really you know? attached to tablet. <laughs> they are. So <laughs> I just and I'm not I sure the market up today. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Go ahead. No, but you know what? It, it's but they're marketing them as laptops. <laughs> they're not even using the word I tablet know. anymore. So yeah. <laughs> Microsoft, you, you know. They like to point to the fact that Surface is about creating new form factors, which it was once. You know, I mean, it's not really so much that anymore. But, you know, the, who? why are you creating new form factors, right? Are you creating something because there's a need for something new? Or are you creating something just to match your own little baloney, stupid, you know, things that you've happened to have invented or thought up or whatever? Like, mm -hmm. I don't really feel that this meets a need. It feels like and a legacy, the one, Bill Gates legacy. He was, it's a strange thing. He's wanted thing. the tablet since 2000. <laughs> I love this yeah. thing. I, this is, I want to be clear about this. I love Surface Book. I mean, I love it. And yet, <laughs> I look at this and it's like, why, why is it yeah. like this? Here's a use case Cobra in our chat room uh, mm -hmm. suggests that that exact setup that you described that is so mm -hmm. complicated where you detach it, flip it around, yeah. reattach it, allows you to draw kind of like a Surface Studio at that right. 18 degree angle. No, of course. So if you have to yeah. go through a lot of, convol lot of uh, convolutions to make yeah. that work. Yeah. No, I know that's why. I mean, well, it's a can, nice thing. And you can totally know. do that with a convertible. I mean, a two-in-one, right? Because yeah. that's what I do with my Lenovo. I just flip it around. If I well, I, I, there is a very slight angle <laughs> because, you, you know, because of the hinge that you get when you do it with a surface book so it's raised up 
four percent or something. It's a slightly a slightly well, better angle, want, right? Isn't yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess. Yeah, we so we we didn't talk about the Panos thing again uh, in, in much depth, but you know we mm -hmm. said he gave this kind of introductory talk. So part of the introductory talk was how Microsoft has changed how they make hardware, software, and services. Like he gave this whole glimpse of what he said is the new way of working there. And what he said is, you know, in the old days, there'd be like the Windows team making Windows and there'd be the Surface team making Surface. Then they'd come together at the end and they'd be like, oh, yeah, do these two things work together? Great. <laughs> um, hopefully they do. Yep. But now, <laughs> now they say before they create any new form factor or update a form factor like the Surface Book 2, they go all in a room together, Windows, Office, and Surface, and they all collaborate on the idea together. So this kind of explains why they're pushing ink so hard because, you know, the right. Office team is adding all these inking features to Office. Okay, how can we make it so people are more likely to use the pen? Oh, we do something like Don't this. Don't include the pen right. with your product, which, by the right. way, which they're you have also to pay, doing still have to pay extra for. Yeah. Uh, yeah my but, Lenovo came with the pen. Right, right. Uh, yeah, you know, every so that, other device does. Yeah. It does. And, and one thing we didn't mention um, about what's different about the new Surface Book, they fixed... They say, or at least mostly fix the magnet situation, so the pen isn't going to fall off as much. They didn't do a pen loop, Paul, but they did uh, up the magnet strength so that they the pen will stay put. They do still sell pen loop, though, by the way. Do they really? Oh, man. Yeah, I just tweeted about it yesterday. Five <laughs> did bucks. Did you buy all of them? We did. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the new design. It will just be like pen loops in kind of a exactly. repeating pattern. <laughs> Yeah, so if if you buy into this storyline that they have, and I I kind of believe this is what they're doing now, um, you can kind. Oh. It made me think. You know what? We almost can predict, or at least have a better idea of what the next device type might be that they're going to make. If you look at what, okay, what in Redstone Four are going to be the big features they push? We don't know yet okay. what those are, but once we know them, I think then you start thinking about okay, so if they're pushing. Um, say say they start pushing more something around Office, right? Um, it would make you think, okay, what kind of a form factor are they going to build that's going to really put Office front and center? That might be where the Andromeda thing comes up, right? Yep. So if they yeah. make this like Andromeda thing like a thing little thing notebook, is, right? Yeah. yeah, and then you, you think, okay, the Office team is going to add this, this, and this to Office. So let's make a device that showcases Office. I think this is okay. what they're doing right. now. Yeah. I guess. I, I The thing I don't understand is um, we've had three new Surface releases this year. And uh, do you remember which one came first, Surface Laptop or Surface Pro? Laptop, like then Pro. Laptop, yeah. then Pro. And then yeah. Book. So Laptop mm -hmm. is the least tablet of the three. It's literally a laptop yeah. form factor. It does have a touch and screen with pen support, but, you know, no one's really going to do with that. Um, right. Surface Pro comes out, the new version, and there was some real hardware innovation in that device that didn't really get enough press. And that's that it's not just enough to make, you know, if you're making software, you have to make your own hardware. You know, the famous phrase mm -hmm. everyone carts out now from Alan right. Kay. Microsoft, yeah. like Google, like Apple, is also making hardware components, right? Mm -hmm. Chips that go inside the computers or the devices or whatever. And in the case of Surface Pro, they had a special chip behind the screen that made that screen interact better with the pen. In other words... You can use a Surface Pen with any service, but if you use it with Surface Pro, you're going to get dramatically better performance because they did mm -hmm. that kind of value add on the back end, which is really cool. By the way, no mention of that at all with Surface Book 2. No mention. Now, I'm not saying yeah. it's not there, but I find it odd they didn't mention that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, It yep. seems like a tablet-based device post-new Surface Pro where they talked about all this hardware innovation, which I... <laughs> think warranted a, a Surface Pro 5 name, frankly. Um, they come up with this new one and it's like, it looks, it's the same device. Look, <laughs> you know, but that was a bigger one. You know, the yeah. better GPUs and all that kind of stuff. And that's great. Right. Um, right. I, I, I find there's a weird disconnect. Yeah, except, you know, I'd say, cons, I, you know? I think Surface Book 2, if you look at, okay, they remember they talked a lot about, this is like, I forget what the number was, four or five times more performant than Surface Book 1, um, more yeah. powerful. And then they talked a lot about mixed reality and AI as being use cases, like people who are data scientists sure. who need to crunch huge amounts of data and process it on their machines. They showed off in the little, you know, we had the, like this little mini showcase that we get to see under NDA. 
and they showed us some of the new Office 3D stuff. Um, you know how you can create a uh, 3D object and have it in PowerPoint. Yep. So they were saying, you know, yep. here's a here's a use case where you don't want just like any old machine. You need the highest powered blah, 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 right? So I think, oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, whether they're creating this, which they are, I mean, to some extent, or they're kind of justifying it or however you want to look at it. Um, I think they are doing this though. Like, how can we make people want this device? Okay, let's think of use cases where you need something that's so super, super graphic intensive and powerful. Are you suggesting that this chip is in there and they, they just didn't promote it? Or that yeah, they felt like maybe. this wasn't important for the... There could be, by the way, that absolutely could be. Um, yeah, that's what I think. I think, well, you know, we... So again, like when we saw these things last week, they never talk speeds and feeds to us at all. Like they never even mentioned them. We had to ask a lot of questions to try to find out certain things. USB-C yeah, is a good I, example. Right, right? I, I took that, <laughs> right, but... You know, when, when Google announced the Pixel a couple of weeks back or whenever mm -hmm. that was, you know, they yeah. made a point of saying, look, everyone has these specs. Everyone has the same mm -hmm. processor. Everyone can put lots of RAM and storage. They have the same mm -hmm. screen. You know, uh, it's Android, so they all have the same capabilities. So how do you differentiate, you know? Um, that stuff is true in the PC world and, as well. And, and I actually found, you know, he was go he did go on and on about how amazing this thing was and powerful and blah, blah, Ironically, blah. Ironically, the Google Pixel has a hidden yeah, an system extra on right. a chip well, of course. in it of course. That for yeah. camera. Photography that everyone's, isn't activated. Everyone's yet. doing that. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. But Microsoft didn't talk up that stuff. What they talked up was yeah. the stuff that any laptop maker can put in their products. NVIDIA graphics, uh, Intel quad core processors. Like this stuff is available to everybody. Mm -hmm. And Lenovo's mm -hmm. doing it, HP's doing it, Dell's doing it. Um, yeah. I, 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 I just found it a little odd, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they certainly addressed issues with previous gen Service Book, you know, even Performance Pro, not a particularly powerful. GPU, um, the 1050 mm -hmm. and the 1060 in particular that are in the new versions are those are laptop gaming laptop class graphics. Those are mm -hmm. legit, you know. Yeah. Um, as I think he said, uh, 1080p, you know, uh, gaming 60 frames a second, absolutely capable mm -hmm. of that. So um, you could use one of these things as gaming laptops if yeah. you wanted to. Right. Um, and, and you know it, what? That makes sense cool. in this whole narrative thing, right? Like, th yeah. what's the other thing they're pushing so hard this year? Xbox and gaming, right? And what if you say, hey, this could be your gaming rig too? Blah. Fits well, in with right. their story. But this is the, the dual use thing. And by the way, another thing that yeah. didn't get a lot of press, uh, unfortunately, and I, this, I'm guilty of this as well. Uh, at least the 15 inch version, I'm not sure of the 13, but I believe he said the 15 inch version has that Xbox controller chip in it. Right, meaning that you can use an Xbox controller wirelessly at full speed with this laptop, like you can on an Xbox console. Um, there's mm -hmm. only been one or two, or a small handful of PCs that have ever shipped with this thing, and I think they announced it a year ago, year and a half ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always been curious that Microsoft never included it in any of their Surface devices, so yeah. they're finally doing so here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should we should tell people what's available when too because this also mm -hmm. wasn't talked about at the event really right um so uh 13.5 inch models are going to be available to buy november 16th in microsoft stores and the microsoft online store in the u.s canada australia new zealand hong kong china japan uk france germany and austria right uh they won't say when it's coming to anything beyond that the 15 inch though Available to purchase November 16th uh, only in the U.S. And they won't say when that will be broadened to other markets. Right. The, Interesting. The cheapest version of this is um, $1,499, $1,499 for the lowest end 13.5 well, inch. Realistically speaking, though, <laughs> that machine yeah. only has a dual core previous generation right. That's right. Intel core yep. processor. Actually... You should never yeah. buy that. <laughs> if you, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. if you want to get into Service Book now, and by the way, that price doesn't, there's no pen included. So correct. <laughs> not only is it the same price as before, but it's really $100 more expensive. They're not giving you the pen. True. But yeah, the real low-end version that I would consider to even buying yeah. would be the 18, I think it's 1899, I think. Yeah, 1999. Which is based, 19, oh, geez, even better. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is the quad core part, which is what you really want, right? If you're going to yeah. upgrade to this thing or buy this thing, you got to get the, you don't get the one dual core version, get the, right. get a quad core chip at the very least. Yeah. The highest end though, when you get a one terabyte version with the uh, Intel eighth generation is 3,299. Yep. Big bucks. Yeah. It's 
big bucks. That's the 15 inch. Yep. But so, uh, yeah. all the quad core versions come with uh, dedicated GPUs now, Correct. including on the 13 yep. inch version. So actually right. it's most yeah. of them, but there are seven or eight models. I don't remember the exact number. All but one have a GPU. Right. Only um, that cheapest which I think was one the right does approach. not. Yep. Yeah. The cheapest one is like you just said, don't probably don't go for that one. It's just um, like Surface Laptop. Pretend the cheap one doesn't is. exist. Look up at the second yeah. rung and go from there. And unfortunately, that yeah. raises the price. You say five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> That's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. These are expensive products. They are. They By are. the way, though, to be fair, they compare uh, well to say MacBook Pro. They compare well to mm -hmm. gaming laptops uh, that have similar specs. They compare pretty well to Dell XPS. You could actually get a Dell XPS 15 for uh, significantly less, actually. But um, I don't know if they've updated it to the new part yet. But uh, they had quad core last year, this mm -hmm. past year, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's Surface Book 2. We, by the way, do not have review units. People have asked me that. Um, they didn't right. even have them for us. So we don't have them well, hidden but, here uh, somewhere. So, by the way... <laughs> So interesting, right? We went to an HP event where they talked up these new quad core parts. And for the first time in, I can remember, they didn't hand out review units at the event. We went to a mm -hmm. Microsoft event where they talked up these new quad core Intel parts. For the first time I can remember, they didn't hand out review well, units at the event. These parts did just come out last week, the coffee lake. Uh, right? I'm, I actually think, I don't know that they have come out. Well, wait a minute, no, <laughs> you, you know, know what they have at oh. the U, the... Um, uh, the laptop, the desktop versions came out. I don't think the laptop. Are they talking Coffee Lake? Uh, yeah. Eighth, well, eighth gen. I would, well, no, there's eighth the, gen Kaby Lake, which is yep. confusing right. as hell. Maybe that's, that's what, what they're talking the, about. That's what the okay. laptop parts are. So yeah. technically they're out, but Intel is specifically keeping them to high volume, high end PC makers. And they're allotting them in very limited uh, capacities because they're not charging anymore for them. Wow. than they are for the normal uh, dual core parts. And the reason they're doing this is because AMD is about to come out with something new and they want to prevent that from getting popular. <laughs> so I don't think this stuff is, this. Stuff, well, I should say, I know this stuff is not broadly available. It's just not out there. Yeah. And I don't, I don't mean to say it doesn't exist. Of course it does. But um, they're really kind of drip dripping these things out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. in other words, good luck getting one right away. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I, I wonder it's how be many through the holidays. Yeah. I know, you know? pre-orders start November 9th for these, um, but I bet it'll sell out like boom right away. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'll make a lot of them. Yeah, we'll probably see a bigger push for this stuff, meaning these eighth gen Intel uh, machines at CES, and then yeah. those machines really kind of come out February, March, April. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think for the holidays, it's going to be pretty limited across the board, not just Microsoft. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yep. So I guess Microsoft's back in Surface hardware. <laughs> yep. After, <laughs> after announcing yeah, they their poo Exodus in 2019. <laughs> they poo-pooed that pretty hard over. at the event. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. 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 yeah, of course they did. Of course they did, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. But, you know, I, like I said before, they've invested so much money in setting up the whole Surface Lab and, like, getting all this manufacturing prowess and design prowess. I, I would be super surprised if they just totally said, you know what, next year we're not going to do this anymore. We're done. No, you know what? I, that Alan Kay quote, which, you know, again, Steve Jobs was a big fan of and uh, Google carted out this year and probably last year too. And Satya Nadella said it ignite, by the way, poorly, mm -hmm. but he got, he kind of coughed it out. Yeah. Um, there, there's truth to that, What's obviously, the because there are all the big platform makers are doing it. What's the but quote? Again, I, you, I have think, to, you have to uh, make software hardware if you make software. Whatever that quote yeah, is. If you're serious about software, you <laughs> oh, have to make you have your to own make hardware. hardware. Right. But yeah. see, I think it, when when people hear that, and I, I'm guilty of this as well, I, what I think of is, well, you're making an iPhone, or you're making a, a laptop, or you're making, a, you know, whatever. You think of, you think when you think hardware, you think of the, the the device, the whole device. But I actually think the bigger thing that's going on here is those components, right? Microsoft is doing this in the data center, right? They have those. Um, you know the name of them, gated, blah, blah, whatever they are for Azure. Uh, you know, they're making microprocessors, essentially, or special processors for the cloud. I think these components are, are the ultimate aim of that statement mm -hmm. and that it's it's really about that kind of stuff. Because, like I said, you know, anyone can make a phone. Anyone can make a laptop. 
Um, how do you differentiate an, an HP convertible from a Dell convertible? Um, yeah. You know, Microsoft is a company that can do that stuff by because they make the software, so they can custom tailor hardware for their software. Yep. Well, good on them. <laughs> um, We're great in the phone market. And is, you know, is so. this Surface Book Two? What do, what do they call it? Yeah, Surface Book Two. Book two. Dos. Oh, we should mention we didn't mention the USB C port. That lonely little thing on oh, the side. Do they have one? Yeah, sort of. So, <laughs> you know, current generation Surface Book has a has a mini display port. You know, that kind of square port you see on a lot of Macs and stuff. Um, for video out, that's the purpose. And the problem with the subsystem on this computer is that it's USB based, uh, the expansion port. So, there's no real way to do two 4K displays off of a Surface, any Surface, Surface Book, whatever, um, even if you have a dock. And so a lot of us have been saying, you know, if you guys just went to USB-C Thunderbolt 3, you could chain all kinds of stuff it's off of that. It'd be chain. beautiful. Yeah, you one port. So this USB-C port, it, it, it replaces the mini display port, but it's only for video out. So there's no power. Ca well, I'm sorry, there is actually drip power through it. I guess it's like a... You know what? What's the opposite of fast charging? Because it's that. It's like um, <laughs> trickle, <laughs> trickle charge. Yeah. So if you had, <laughs> you know, if if it took ninety minutes to charge the device off the normal Surface Connect port or whatever, it would take nineteen hundred <laughs> minutes or something to do it off of mm. the US. It, you would never want to charge on that thing. But I guess you could if you wanted to. Mm. But it's not for. It's really just for video out so it's it's no better than what was there before you're just going to have to use a different dongle so it's kind of their first mm -hmm. baby step toward hopefully <laughs> you know waking up to what yeah. the rest of the world's been doing for years i guess courage courage <laughs> courage the, the c in usb c stands for courage <laughs> I uh, I love USB C. I I'm ports have become a big thing really on the, on laptops. Uh, yeah. The lack thereof, or the decision to include mm. yep. this or that, they're still using the Surface Power cord. I'm sure. I mean, but, not, you know, we, we go. Yeah, they are. Um, we go through this all the time, right? You know, uh, Lenovo just came out with that 25th anniversary ThinkPad. When you go back and look at older ThinkPads, you see these things we haven't seen in a long time, like like literally DVI right on the <laughs> on the laptop or VGA. <laughs> Or those old school audio out ports they used to always have. Um, it's, you know, serial ports, PS2 ports. So you can go back in time all the way. Parallel ports and the gigantic ports mm -hmm. in the back of these laptops. Mm -hmm. um, and every time, I guarantee you, if we, were, if we had this podcast, you know, 15 years ago, I'd be like, I don't understand why Microsoft <laughs> hasn't adopted USB <laughs> 1.0. It's so awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was, um, and again, they didn't mention it at all. Like we just when we went into the demo room, people were like, "Wait, there's a USB C port on there." Yeah, and we were like, they "Hey, bring does it, it up." Like, yeah. <laughs> now the problem with USB C is uh, you can't judge a port by its right. Shape. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. <laughs> uh, there's many. There's all you know. USB C has so many different capabilities and specs, and the, and it has to I know. do. So is it a? Yeah. Is it like it does video? It's video out. Uh, and it's it's, data. it does it charging? do pop. No. no, it does do charging, but some, because of the, it's just USB C trickle charging. It's trickle mm -hmm. charge. Yeah. yeah, it's not normal charge. It's not fast charge. It's slower charge. Hey, but at least it charges. It's literally it's like better a, than nothing. Yeah, backup plan. You could you, you could probably generate a faster oh, charge cool. by like rubbing sandpaper next to it. <laughs> well, I guess that's what the HP has because I can the Spectre. That you and I have, Mary Jo, if it's yeah. closed, if it's shut down, it will charge it very, very slowly on some other USB-C charger. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, by the way, that particular machine, remember, that was, if not the first, one of the first HPs that that's supported right. this. And they were very right. nervous that someone was yeah. going to plug in a non-standard thing and fry the motherboard. They didn't have any protection technology built into it at the time. It, well, they, still, they still don't, obviously. But they... They did that on purpose because they were trying to protect people from ruining the machine. Yeah. Now, subsequent HPs, they figured out how to prevent that from happening, so they don't do that anymore. But that was the one machine. It would, remember, it's all USB-C. Oh, so the new, the new ones, uh, the, the yeah. don't do. You can charge in any, any 
any USB. They work normally. They're all USB. -C. Yeah, that's, you don't have to use way, HP's part. That's you know. the holy grail. Is that everything? Yeah. My yeah. phone, yep. my laptop, mm -hmm. all different laptops. They all use interchangeable yeah. USB. One charger. You can yeah. Just plug, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> Chain and them, I, yeah. maybe. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, it just would be so nice. I'm close. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if I pointed this out to you, Mary Jo, but on the one of the recent trips I bought, I brought a ThinkPad X1 Yoga, which mm -hmm. uses USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 for charging. And there's a USB-C Thunderbolt C port, yeah. you know, another one, it's two of them or whatever. And the most rarest of things to see in the wild is charging over USB-C and then charging a phone over USB-C as well, where it's a USB-C to USB-C cable. Because um, mm -hmm. I have the original mm -hmm. Pixel, and that's what the charger is. It's very unusual. It's yeah. still very unusual. You don't really see these. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's USB C to USB A. Right, right. And mm -hmm. um, I know I pointed it out to someone. I'm like, I bet you've never seen this before. <laughs> it's like <laughs> two USB C things going on at the same time. I was like, oh my god, yeah. look at that! It's the future. I have a you million know. USB C <laughs> to yeah. USB C cables. That's how I do it now. Yep. Yeah. I love it. It's a revolution. Yeah. It's really it's hard awesome. to go back to other it stuff is. once you and have it. That, mm. Yeah, and Microsoft will get there. I don't know why they're a little behind on that, but they are. Mm. They'll get there. I think they're stuck on that old. You know, I mentioned how they like to reuse uh, designs, like Apple does. I I think they have a roadmap that has them on the Surface yeah. Connect platform. Yeah. I think of it for a long time. <laughs> you know, and I think they were mm. a little broadsided by this sudden switch over to USB C and Thunderbolt three. Yeah. Mm. And you and again, USB C is many different things. So it, that's unlike yeah. a lot of previous it's, standards. Yeah. It, can be it almost needs color. Remember it how would be nice uh, to distinguish it. Yeah, USB, USB three ports right. would have a, a Blue color port. in yeah. the port, yeah. Yeah. so you yeah. could tell it was the high speed that one. Would be nice. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, I agree. Uh, any other new Surface accessories to go along with it? Show you Lots. anything else? Lots. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah. How about the mouse? Let's talk about the mouse. I latched Which right I onto the mouse. I know. Are I like lefty, the mouse. By the way, I, can't, I, think, you, I think you're no, a lefty. No, but you? Leo no, is, not. right? I use a Microsoft mouse. They've are always you a lefty? Made, yeah, I'm a lefty. They've always made great. So That's this why mouse, I you use can't it. use. No, it's, yeah, it's a righty symmetric. mouse. I know. Yeah. Microsoft's war against left-handed people continues. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Left people matter. No, you know what? But the reason I latched onto it was because it's. I've had trouble with some of their other mice. Even though they're really beautiful, I don't find them ergonomically friendly. Right, and this one, I touched it. And I'm like, this one is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's good. And it's the first one. It's good for me in years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm gonna get so one. So it has like a thumb rest on it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, three programmable buttons. They have a scroll wheel that has this very interesting feature where there's a button right under where the scroll wheel is, so you can set the scrolling speed to go fast or very precise, one line by one line. Right. And I. I actually think that's really useful for, for people like me who scan giant documents sometimes for something, you know, like you just flip the scroll wheel, but then sometimes you're like, wait, it just is like, I can't control it. It's flipping so fast. So you flip to your section and then you click the button no, and you not, can go line. It looks button. great. Yeah. The other thing is you can sync it with up to three devices at once. Yeah. That's cool. uh, actually, I should say there's another thing beyond that too. That, that itself is pretty cool, right? It's a Bluetooth mm -hmm. device. You can connect it to three computers. That's cool for me. I, I have a, the same mouse I use at home. I have a second version of my bag that I travel with. I like to use the same thing. So I could, you could conceivably have the one mouse. Um, it also works over USB if you want to do it wired, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think I, I've certainly never seen that with a Microsoft mouse. I don't mm -hmm. recall ever yeah. seeing that. I don't know anywhere, really. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yep. I liked it. I was. I, yeah. I didn't realize it wasn't for left-handers, though. I thought. I guess I just yeah. didn't think through like about flipping it around or. That's whatever, how it happens, but. Mary Jo. We don't think through. <laughs> you know, we just. I know. So wait a minute. Look, so he's using his left hand. It's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, my wife, who's a lefty, also mouse is right yeah. for that reason. You know, it's just. Oh really? Because right. well, she doesn't well, want anyone yeah. to see it. <laughs> I think see my wife trying it. to write with her right hand. It's like just, just maintain well, your composure, honey. Also, You'll be fine. She's a financial person, and so mm -hmm. she's always uh, spending time on the right hand side of the keyboard on the keypad. So maybe, maybe it's because it's right yeah. there. That's why. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. But uh, it's weird because uh, then yeah. her son, who's also a lefty, we're a house full of lefties. He mouses yeah. right as well because mom <laughs> mouses right. Oh, well, wow. if you see yeah. some torches outside your house tonight, uh -huh. Leo, you'll know why. <laughs> Man, I feel like that. You know, we're just, we're outcasts in our neighborhood. Oh, there go the lefties. 
Oh, the righties. Yeah, the righties are all going to that event they're having tonight for righties only. <laughs> you can't join our club. You're a lefty. Uh, did they? Uh, I did glom onto it, though. I like grab the mouse. I'm like, ooh, the mouse. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm into mice. No, I, that's good. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's a little plasticky, you know. Yeah, no, I'm it into mice and I'm into bit. keyboards. Yeah, I like. Yeah. The, they still haven't made a good keyboard. A nice but ballistic keyboard, I really like. Yeah, I want them to make an ergonomic surface keyboard, maybe someday. Mm. Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah, because Microsoft yeah. makes that 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 weird. They do, and the ergonomic doobie. one's good. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. That's yeah. what I use every day. I, I couldn't. I don't think I could work without this, not for a long period yeah. of time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you type a lot. Um, new pen, new dial, anything like that? No. Yeah. Nah. There was, I thought there was a new pen, but we didn't, I, they didn't really talk about it. Maybe I'm wrong. With a bigger magnet. No, the magnet. pen's the same. The, what they had was a new <laughs> color, right? There's a aqua version of the pen now. Oh, right. And then there were aqua right. accessories. Like there was a type cover for Surface Pro. That's right. And a mm. new arc mouse, which is probably like that the, the least ergonomic of mice. Yeah, um, but it's cute. It is. It's cute, but it's so not practical for yeah, me. I've never like, used it. Uh, right, my hand right. kills me after oh, I use it. <laughs> oh, okay, but the point yeah. of it more is that it's it folds up. It's kind of portable. Yeah, it's it's yeah. great. It travels well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll never use it. <laughs> I pretty much stick with <laughs> or Logitech. It, but, uh, I have to be honest. The yeah. MX Anywhere and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I just really like them. Yeah. Although they're, you know, speaking of pens, that I was telling Paul this, they did add some new inking um, support pieces i think i don't know if it's just for the surface book two or not but only the 15 inch supports this but now you can do shading with the pen and the 13 inch does not let you do that yet because they i guess are testing this out on the 15 inch but i don't i'm not clear if that's like something that's tied to the pen and the surface book two or if that they have to have a special screen that sounds like it must be Uh, right they had a lot i mean the new still the Surface Pen they released with the new Surface Pro supports Tilt. It yeah. seems like it would be based. So you're saying it's different from Tilt? Yeah, it is. It's like mm. you can actually okay. do real shading, like tip the pen on its side and shade with it. Yeah, but that's what... Isn't I, that Tilt? I think that's, that's tilt. tilt. I don't know. I don't know. Is there Tilt? I thought yeah, I, they I were saying so. it's like a whole new thing. They're like, look, you can do this. And I was like, oh, I, I hadn't seen that actually, so... Maybe it's just new since the previous Surface Book. Um, maybe. Oh, yeah, you know, maybe. It has the, maybe. It has the sensor. I'll, I'll, look, I'll look it up. I'm not, I, I, okay. I, I kind of glazed over during the pen part. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know. no but what about the other mouse that we didn't even hear about, but, but I guess right. Panos teased it, right? Yeah, so the classic IntelliMouse 3.0 from... 10, 15 years ago? I don't know, a long yeah. time ago. That's what I got right here. Wired mouse. Yeah. You know, it had the red yep. light in the back. Yeah, remember? that's what I got. Um, they're re- they're coming up with a new version of that called the, I think it's just called the classic IntelliMouse. Um, this one's yeah, so, so it old, looks, it's got that gray schmutz on it that you get after a while. Yeah, yeah. You, well, so it's not going to be white. So, you know, <laughs> at, at some point they came out with like a dark gray version of yeah, this. So it's basically the same design. The, the the light on the bottom is white instead of uh-huh. red, which I think kind of ruins the effect personally. But uh-huh. uh, I guess it, obviously it's a lot more accurate, so they can go with mm-hmm. whatever the three thousand DPI. I use it because it's cheap and it never breaks. <laughs> it's also ambidextrous, <laughs> though. Look it, at that. It is. It's symmetrical. Yeah. Oh, you're a lefty sympathizer, yeah. aren't you, Laporte? Oh, they got <laughs> That's me. How we yeah. Get you. Yes. I have a righty. Have a non-righty mouse. <laughs> Uh, that's suspicious. <laughs> Busted by the righty Gestapo. <laughs> you guys are tough. Come out with your left hand raised. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So when it's coming back, but it's just it's got a white light, and I believe it's out right now. It's better. It's like thirty nine so, bucks. I'll see this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's okay. Yeah, maybe I'll get a few more. Put them in the freezer. <laughs> you can stock up on them. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why not, right? Get them all. All right. We have to talk about the fall creators update in a second. It's here. Oh, that also happened, yes. People are complaining <laughs> already about stuff. I mm-hmm. want to know how much of a problem it all is. All throughout Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft. Now, our show is brought to you literally today by a 10 gigabit symmetric fiber from Sonic. Yes, I said 10 
gigabits. Oh, no machine in this building can handle 10 gigabits. I guess our routers can. They're all one, you know, one gigabit interfaces. But think of it that way. Uh, we could get 10 machines at full speed. And that's one of the reasons we love it. And the other reason is we love Sonic because they're an amazing internet service provider. The internet infrastructure in the U.S., I don't think I'm... I'm not being a Bernie Sanders here when I'm saying it needs fixing. Too many people are paying too much. This, this should have been on Bernie's platform for unsatisfactory cable internet. <laughs> Sonic delivers fast, affordable internet, phone, and TV to homes and businesses, except... Mostly in California, so a lot of you listening, I'm just going to make you mad here because this is what you want. But but the reason I love to mention it is because it shows you how rapacious the other guys are because they Sonic does well, makes a living doing this. Listen to what you get. Residential and business, fiber to the premise networks, fiber right up to the premise, gigabit connectivity, San Francisco, the North Bay Area, East Bay Area. Here's what you get. 15 email accounts, you get a gigabyte of storage, you get personal web hosting with a new domain, you get a fax line, not just a fax line, you get a regular home phone, you could port your number to it and everything with unlimited local and long distance calling, download speeds of 1,000 megabits, one gigabit, for only $40 a month. $40 a month for gigabit, home phone service, all the email, all of that stuff. And there's no bandwidth caps. They stand up for your privacy. They've got friendly local customer support. The pricing is great for all their products, even the business products like we have. If you go to the EFF and you look at their ISP checklist, green check marks all the way across. They're one of the very, very few because they're really, they're really the best ISP I've ever seen. Sonic. Dot com slash twit join the internet revolution if you can get it there you must get your first month of sonic internet and phone service free plus bundle it with dish and you'll get 120 dollars on your sonic bill i wish every one of you could get it i really do uh it's the best sonic.com slash twit paving the way to a better internet why wouldn't you do it if you could Paul Thorop, Mary Jo Foley. We are talking uh, Microsoft and FCU. <laughs> FCU. FCU too, buddy. FCU <laughs> is here. The fall. Finally. Update. It began pushing what? Yesterday? Yep. 1 p.m. ET. ET. Now, would I have it on my Surface Book here? Let me just see. It's a. Yes, you should. It's a Microsoft, I got it on mine. It's a Microsoft product. Well, no, mm -hmm. You know what? I, I got it today um, for my HP laptop, and it and took what are we me. to make of that, by the way? I know. Yeah, it took me unusual. months to get creators up. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, that was the big story with the previous release, you know, how slowly mm -hmm. they were rolling it out. And they were doing it in yeah. response to how poorly the previous I'm, release had gone. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> are we seriously going to do this? Like every other release, they're going to like fire hose the thing out? <laughs> well, already we're hearing uh, problems, right? But that's kind of almost inevitable. I'm not right? well. Problems, uh, it, more I would say confusions, right? Oh, okay. are, are you actually yeah. hearing about um, like actual problems, or just that people aren't finding a well, feature they were expecting it, to you find? Know, like we, as we mentioned, the the some of the stuff, some uh, stuff is turned off, right, and things like that. Let me see. Yeah. Um, what like Windows is the media player still in there, or do they they don't take it off? Or it is no it's media player still, still there. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me see, because somebody was saying. Also has a beautiful Windows Vista icon too. That's nice. Why did that fall? <laughs> oh, I know one problem, but this is unusual. Dual boot Linux systems. It renumbers the partitions and confuses the hell out of them. Oh really? Yeah, that was yeah. by design, though. That's, that's fine. By, that's intentional. Uh, so that's the Microsoft I, I respect. Says the fall update tell me to remove the Glyph game on two out of three machines, but not all three, just two out of the three. The glyph game? Will it tell you to remove stuff that's not compatible? Yeah. Hmm. It will. Well, I haven't yeah. heard a lot of that happening on this particular Maybe. release. That's that's been a thing in the past. It's been a it's a thing when you upgrade yeah. to Windows ten from yeah. a previous version of this. Yeah. All hmm. right. Well, maybe it's not. That's that's all I've heard. That's just those silly Linux. People. Yeah, the main thing I've been people have been saying, you know, to, um, is it on MSDN? Yes. Is it on the Volume License <laughs> Center? Yes. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. just 
Is it out there? Can I get it? Um, Where is it? <laughs> it's everywhere. So if you want the ISO, you can yeah. get it. If you want the media yeah. creation tool, you can get it. You know, if you, like it's there. It's If you want it on Windows yeah. Update, surprise, it's probably there. Um, it is. It, it, yep. in, uh, that's for been some of a, you, a big not surprise. All, not everybody. No, not right. for everyone. But I mean, certainly in greater numbers yeah, than was I'm the case with the previous release. You'd think. I mean, this is a Surface laptop. You'd think. But I would think, actually. I'm surprised by that. Yeah, well. And you did a search for new updates and it didn't come up? I'm surprised. Yeah, I got a virus oh. definition. Feature update. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Here it is, 1709. Yeah, yep. feature update. Yep. There it oh. is. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's kind of impressive. <laughs> I know. Well, it's it kind is. of impressive only because it didn't happen this way in the past. It seems like it should always happen this way, but, mm. you well, know, Microsoft hardware. I understand why you st want to stage it if there's a big issue going on and stuff like that, right? No, but right. I mean, come on. What, what hardware could be more known good than Microsoft? Well, that's true. Right? Yeah. yeah, they've tested um, it thoroughly, yeah. I presume, with these. Yeah, I had. Yeah, but I, I was surprised on the interesting. HP. Is that, was that on your Spectre yep. 13T? Yep. The thin one, the Spectre, nice copper on one we have? Are you tempted yep. to get the new one? Um, I would like to look at the new one for sure. It looks pretty cool. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it's okay. it's pretty much everywhere. If you're a vol if you're an enterprise customer, it is on the Volume Licensing Center. It's on MSDN. Um it's now in Windows Update for Business, so it's on WSUS, it's on Windows Update. Yep. Um, what Microsoft does still say, though, is if you don't see it when you look for it, they are advising you not to go get it proactively because it's <laughs> usually there's usually a reason it's not there, like an sure. incompatible driver or something. So if you want to tempt fate and go get it, you can. You should but go I would get it. Tell you not to. Do not <laughs> tempt fate. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's good. Nothing could go wrong. And Windows for workstations, uh, Windows 10 Pro for workstations is there also for, mm -hmm. um, It's I know it's on uh, MSDN and Volume Licensing Center. If you don't have it and you want it, uh, Microsoft's saying go ask your OEM about it if if you don't have it already and don't have a license what? for it. What if you're running you're Windows saying? 10S? What if you're running 10S? 10S is there. Yep. I know so you Leo's want that. laptop has Pro though. Yeah, I had right. I couldn't. You should put it back to S and see what happens. I, <laughs> Stop yeah, it, S is Paul! There. You're the devil. <laughs> S is there. You must be a lefty. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sure it is, but it I just remember L. I couldn't activate my S, so I went back. <laughs> oh right, oh, that's yeah. right. Unusual. Yeah. But it is. Uh, it's installing right now on on the Surface laptop, which is nice. Um, um, so what's not there? Um, by the way, I, I was wrong. I thought it was, uh, I thought Windows Phone was there, the RTM version, but it is not there yet. Right. Uh, so that thing, the Feature 2 release, which Microsoft, I guess, is going to call 10, uh, 1709 also and call it Creator's Update, even though it's not really Creator's Update. Uh, that's not out in, for the handful of phones that are going to be able to get that yet. It's oh, the and there worst are two thing phones. that's happened on Windows Phone all year. There are two phone models that are not going to get this, by the way, which uh, Windows Central, Central found out. The 640 and the 640 XL are not eligible to get uh, this final release. So if you have it in, as an insider, just stay on the insider build there because you're not going to get the final. Hmm. It's the end of the road, guys, as we've said on the show a few I, times. I, the road ended about a mile back. You're actually driving it over did. clear. You're, you've gone off a cliff. And if you look down, <laughs> you'll have that wily coyote moment. Yeah. But like we said, when we were when we were in Orlando and we asked our live audience how many of you are using Windows phones, I'd say at least a third of the audience was. So yeah, it was an awkward moment for me because I had literally been making fun of it for about five minutes straight to that point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you. Yeah. So if you're if you're one of the people still holding on to it. Um, there's a list of phones that Windows Central published um, that is getting it. There's like probably ten phones that are getting it, and at, and this is the end. Like that's literally it. Ten, We're done. ten units. Um, <laughs> it's the, yeah. the most personal. Everyone, in other words, Windows everyone. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. You said something. I just rewound the tape to listen. Mm -hmm. Xbox is getting it now. Xbox got it first. What? Yep. Yep, Xbox got it on Monday. Makes it, it makes you wonder what it is. If it, well, if it yeah, works uh, on all yeah. those things, what is it's, it? So on Xbox, first of all, they're not calling it the Fall Creators Update because, you know, we don't ever do anything the same way across Xbox and Windows. So they're just calling this the Fall Update because they've never used that name before. Um, and 
it doesn't have any of the stuff in it that Windows does, right? If you were to go through a top 10 list of, hey, what's new in this release, none of that stuff is on the Xbox. But why would it be, right? This is a console. So the Xbox fall update is really about just making, finally, making the dashboard and also the guide, which is what comes up when you hit that button on the controller, uh, fast, right? Mm -hmm. And they finally figured out how to do it. And the way they did it was they got rid of all the crap. Mm. You know, because there was a bunch of stuff in the UI before. And now it's just, it's super personalized. You can have as little or as much as you want on the screen. And uh, I think they finally acknowledged, like, people don't hang around in the dashboard. They launch games and they go, you know. Mm. And they finally got that junk out of the way. So I, I think they finally did it. I mean, they talk yeah. about dashboard speed and guide speed, I'd say, just about every single release. And every, every single time, there's like a psychosomatic. Kind of, you're like, yeah, I think I see it. You know, I think it's a little faster. Um, but this time, it, I think it's legitimately faster. So I think they've kind of they've kind of gotten it nailed down finally. Mm. It only took like right. four years. <laughs> but it's, it's okay. So um, a good question from the chat room, actually. Mm -hmm. Why <laughs> should I do it? I mean, is there, what is, what, what is the benefit to me of the Fall yep. Creators update? Not necessarily an Xbox, just in general. Oh, and the Xbox. Well, the Xbox, well, the Xbox is faster, so that's good. Well, the Xbox, and you, you, you can't. You, right. you basically can't use it without getting it. So let's. There's no point in discussing it. You just. You're it's gonna get too it. Too late. You got it. Um, <laughs> on Windows, uh, I, I okay. So Mary Jo, I'm curious, which I, we haven't discussed this, but no. um, I've I spent a lot of time running over this list of you know what's new in this release, and of course I'm updating the book to document all the new stuff and everything, and I would say. The last release was not a major update by any stretch of the imagination. And yeah. the stuff they were really touting, I don't think was that big of a deal at all. This you mean around, original creators? Yeah. You I mean, feel like it was yeah. kind of half of what they were trying to do. And that maybe mm -hmm. this release now we're finally seeing the full kind of vision mm -hmm. for that creators update thing they were thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think there's something in here for everybody, right? That no matter what your needs or wants are, there's going to be at least one thing in here where you're like, oh, yeah, actually, that's that's hugely mm -hmm. useful, you know. And it kind of spans the gamut of um, just everyday productivity users. You know, one, dri one files, uh, hello, one drive files on demand, for example. Um, yeah. Gamers, bunch of performance improvements there. Simplicity stuff around the game bar and game mode. Um, mixed reality was a platform before. It was there. The 3D stuff was there. But actually now in this release, we finally get uh, the hardware to take advantage of it. We can buy headsets and experience mixed reality. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff here. Um, now, I don't, I don't necessarily, well, actually, I would, personally, I am going to benefit from all of that in a way, but uh, most people probably wouldn't. So, I don't know, do you, uh, how do you think of this release comparatively? Uh, I think this is a really small release, to be honest. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> do, do I get I, unless you, Where's my gun? Unless you're a gamer or somebody yep. who cares about mixed reality, I think it's a big release for you. I think the placeholder replacement stuff is important to a number of people. Um, yep. The one group I would say that is going to benefit from this a lot, and Microsoft has barely talked about this, is the enterprise. Because right. every security feature that they promised earlier this year that was coming to Fall Creators Update did end up coming to it. So Which is pretty Windows rare, Defend by the way. It is. <laughs> Windows yeah. Defender Application Guard, you know, where where that um, quarantines using virtualization technology, any possible malware, that's in there. Um, yep. The Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit stuff gets built right into Windows 10. That's there. It's called Exploit Guard, I think, now. Um, mm. they, you've got all this new intelligence security graph stuff. Um, so all of that made it into the Fall Creators update. And if you're somebody who um, deals with enterprise PCs and manages enterprise PCs, I think there is a lot for you to get out of this release. For me, though, like when I, today when I got the release, I was sitting there looking at my PC. I'm like, does it look any different? Is there anything new <laughs> on here? <laughs> well, I, I, right. So th there's a very little bit of kind of fluid design stuff going on. It's yeah, very subtle. Which it's I can't see. Yeah. Not very, No, but it's, it's, so, it's not very widespread. That's not just you. It's not okay. very well done. Okay, good. Um, here's one, though, um, and, I, and I know you'll disagree with this because we discussed this one a little bit, but um, the photo remix stuff in the Photos app, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I agree that, you know, the ability to add like 3D effects uh, on top of video or, audio or photo slideshows, whatever, is not necessarily yeah. something everyone's going to want or do. Mm -hmm. 
But the thing that's kind of hidden in there that I think is super important because we lost this when Microsoft got rid of Essentials mm -hmm. is a full-featured video editor. Like the video editor that's built into the Photos app is astonishingly good. And it's exactly the level of, I would say, um, functionality and like lack of complexity that most mm -hmm. people want. You know, it's a good consumer-oriented thing. So I think a lot of people have walked away from or yeah. are still using old-fashioned tools on the PC uh, doing this kind of mm -hmm. photo editing or photo uh, slideshow creation or video creation, whatever. And it's not getting a lot of press or whatever, but mm -hmm. I, the video editor in the Photos app is fantastic. It's actually really, okay, let really me good. Ask let me ask you something though. Could could you use the um, remix stuff uh, for a professional type editing? Not like the you know, not like yeah, um, professional. Right. In other words, right? So I don't like, know. I don't think wanted so. to make. Yeah, that's because I had someone complain about that today. He goes, "Yeah, if I wanted to add sprinkles to my um, video <laughs> montage of photos, it's awesome, but yep. I don't." I want to just make a PowerPoint for work and I can't, and I want movie maker. Oh, back. Well, oh, well, okay. So I would say there's, there's a big gap between a professional, you know, professionally produced video that used yeah, Adobe premiere elements right. or something. Yeah. Yeah. And here's, here's 15 photos set to music okay. that transition nicely between each picture and it fades in at the beginning. There's a title at the, at the beginning and it kind of fades out at the end. That is super easy to do in the Photos app. And to okay. me, like that's the mainstream use of this, right? Yep. Uh, and then you could, of course, share right from the app to whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you could, yep. you can take the video you created, put it on YouTube, however you, you know, however you email it, however you send yep. things. But okay. Um, okay. I, to me, that solves a, a need and uh, or yeah. solves a problem. Yep. It satisfies a need. You know, yeah. I, the I think argument it's just I made every... Sorry, I, I was going to say every demo I've seen of this, they add all these like little goofy well, cartoony effects, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, I mean, Brad did a goofy <laughs> version of our promo video with, with, yeah. that added a bunch of those sprinkle things to make that yeah. point. You know, it's like kind of goofy. Right. It's the the video version of like a hostage note when you know desktop publishing started. But right, <laughs> Microsoft made it. I I still regret that they did this. It was just a big mistake. You know, they killed Movie Maker before they had yeah. a replacement for it. And it was really unfair to do that to people because they they took away the ability to even go get it, you know? Yeah. And they didn't have something to replace it with. So now mm -hmm. they do. And, you know, yeah. it, you know, a year or two, you know, whatever the delta was there. But at least mm -hmm. it's there now. And mm -hmm. then seriously, it really does work really well. You can ignore all those effects, you know, and I yeah. probably will too. But, um, I know, that's what I need to try. To, yeah. Yeah. I need to yeah. make something and, without all the little like spinning confetti right. things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. And it's a nice little consumery thing. It's the yeah. type of stuff you would think they would kind of just forget about or walk away from. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there it is. It's good. Yeah. I think they're paying a lot of attention. Uh, and I think we're going to see this even more to the whole photos and video experience in Windows. Like I think we're going to see way more things from Microsoft in that area because I think they realize this is one yeah. of the main reasons people use PC still. Exactly. Right? You gotta you gotta play to the strengths of the platform. In other words, mm -hmm. yeah, everyone's going away to these mobile devices to do certain things, but one of the things oh. that's really hard to do on a tiny screen with your thumbs is edit a yeah. video. Interesting. Right. Um, yeah. I know you can yeah. do it, but that makes you know, sense. It's, yeah, you gotta focus yeah, you on want the, the pro stuff. Yeah, you know, the big screen. Yeah. And by the way, plays nicely into the whole creators thing, right? I mean, yeah. that's the other uh, criticism you might have made of the original, not you, one what might have made of the original creators update. You know that you've got this name, but there's not a lot of creator stuff here. You know, mm -hmm. um, there actually kind of is in this release. You know, they've the uh, they added Mixer, uh, which was Beam at the time, to the creators update, but um, that stuff's a lot easier now, and that's a, a, that's a creation kind of thing. The ability to put 3D objects um, mm -hmm. into photos, even or photo slideshows or videos, even though if you don't want to do that yourself, is still yeah. a neat, you know, kind of a thing. Uh, they were at an Adobe conference today and they showed off dial integration with mm -hmm. um, Photoshop, you know, Photoshop, yeah. not not specific to the creators update per se, but yeah. um, there's a you lot know, of every time I, Every time I see a picture, like Frank Shaw, who's the head of communications at Microsoft, he's been tweeting a lot of pictures of himself with like a 3D object in the image. I'm like, it's so okay. Goofy. It's interesting you can do that, I guess. But why? <laughs> why would you ever it's, do it? And then you're going to turn 11 <laughs> and it's going to seem childish to you. I know. Yeah. I, and you know what? I'm, okay, I sound like I hate fun. I do hate fun. But um, 
<laughs> but, yeah. but that is I'm just one of the like, big okay. criticisms about you, by the way. It is. I'm, I'm just like, why would I ever, 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 even like when I was making something for my sure. family, I would never do it. I don't know. I can't, I'm trying to think of a reason to do it and I can't think of one. <laughs> anyway, I know. Donna yeah. saw a car was, we were talking to us at the <laughs> event last week and she's like, you got to make a whatever video. And I'm like, like, I don't know. And she's I know. like, no, you got all this. And I'm like, I just don't. Yeah. I have the same way. I just don't care. Yeah, it's, it's not interesting, but but I recognize that these capabilities are cool. Like I'm not like I'm not going to put starbursts on everything and falling fall leaves or whatever. But right, I think some people are going to like it. You know, we live in this. Yep. These are like animated emojis. You know, it is hedgehog. Here you come. Yeah, yeah. if I get a little hedgehog walk, like a little VR hedgehog that kind of followed me around or AR or whatever that is. I don't know mixed reality like hedgehog. That. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> My little right. Tamagotchi hedgehog thing. <laughs> I'd have to feed it cat food. Virtual cat, <laughs> obviously. All right. Yeah, so th all those kind of things are in there. And if you like that kind of stuff and you want to play around with mixed reality, and uh, the mixed reality yeah. headsets are starting to come to market now, so you can try all that out. It's all part of the Fall Creators update. Yeah. It's nice. Okay. Father That's Robert's nice. bringing this. A, um, I thought he might have it. I was just looking. An Acer um, heads, you know, mixed reality. Yeah, heads. I'm actually getting one of those yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, you are? He was yeah. supposed to bring it today yeah. for the show. I, I guess he's not here yet. That's yep. cool. Yeah. So um, I, I, I tried that out at that event. In fact, I spent quite a bit of time with it. Um, I had never really, I, I've worn the headsets before, but I've never really had the full experience. And so. It was kind of interesting. I would say from a quality level, if you're familiar with all of the types of VR that are, are available, um, honestly, there's a really fine line between, I don't know, phone-based VR, which is, you know, is okay, but it, it, the phone basically explodes in front of your face. It gets so hot. And then something like uh, PlayStation VR, which I'd say is about on par yeah. with the visual quality of um, Windows Mixed Reality. And then, you know... Um, uh, bigger, you know, the kind of more professional or whatever VR platforms like Oculus Rift and um, and the other one, HTC Vive. You know, those guys, you've already seen the effect of them in the market. Like they're lowering prices all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, HTC is talking about doing a tetherless standalone version of the Vive uh, yeah, next year. Yeah, right? trying to copy that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I still think this is kind of a niche side market. Um. Mm -hmm. But there's something to be said for like the formal platform built into Windows and, you know, they're going to integrate with uh, Steam VR, so you'll be able to access that content starting in, I think, December. Tell me um, tell me how these work. They they tether to your PC, right? Yeah, yep. So they're basically like the Oculus Rift or the, or the Vive. Yep. But the so they're VR, are not to be clear, even though they're, they're calling it mixed reality, which I hate, but... It, they're VR yeah. headsets. They're just less expensive VR headsets. They're less expensive. And the one innovation, and I would say the one thing that ties it to HoloLens, is that they have, I've forgotten the name of it, but it's uh, basically the sensors are on the headset that position you in the room. So they don't need you don't need sensors up on the wall or on tripods or whatever. Um, it seems to work pretty well. Like every other VR system or like HoloLens, you, you want to have and probably almost definitely will have like motion controllers. I'd say they're required. Do they come with that um, or no? Yeah, they do. They're bundled. Um, they work. They're all. They're identical. I should say the 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 headsets are all different. The motion controls are all the same uh, across the devices. The screens, are, the screens are good. Latency's low. Yeah. Are well, you playing? Okay. What are you playing? There's, are you playing Steam games or is it? No, not yet because that's not available yet. But the so the 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 frame rate is going to vary according to the power of the PC. So you could actually have 30 frames per second. You could have 60 if it's a higher-end machine. So those are the two things. You're going you're gonna to want the 60, right? <laughs> because it's going to be queasy depending on what you're doing. Regardless, it's going to be worse if it's only 30 frames a second. Um, I think the resolution is consistent across all the devices, although I just saw that the Samsung one that's not coming out until next month might have a slightly higher resolution. But I thought it was 1440 by 1440 across the board, but maybe someone can tell me if that's wrong. I thought the quality was decent. You know, I, I, um, I mean, I think the quality you, of Daydream View is pretty decent, honestly. You, but, you, but you said you haven't, or you just not much used the Vibe or the Rift? I've used both, but um, only briefly, I would yeah. say. 
you know, so I've gotten a feel for what those games look like, what the environment's like. Right. Um, I, you know, it, this is more, it's a more affordable, although those other things are coming down in price. It's a lot less complex. Yeah, there's and, a lot of setup going on uh, when you... Yeah, I mean, it's, this, this is still going to be some setup, I bet. I haven't set one up myself yet, so I'll be yeah. doing that tomorrow. But um, I, I think this is the first credible stab at making this kind of a slightly more mainstream thing. Although, again, remember, I, I really don't think this is going to be... It's not like a mouse or a keyboard, right? Like, only a, mm. some people will have this. And I'm curious about non-entertainment uses of it, too, right? Me, I mean, too. Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm not probably going to sit on the couch and watch a movie, you know, with the, the headset on or whatever, although you could do that. Um, and the games are going to be of a type because of the limitations mm -hmm. of VR. Um, I still want my Paris Cafe experience. If someone could just make that for yeah. me. I, the I one thing I could see it being maybe useful for, if I, I think you can, can you map your environment and then add something to it with, with a um, mixed reality headset? Can you, you know, like say, inverse? say you wanted to like put your couch, put a, you know, different yeah, no, models of couch in your living room. You can't, no, right? Or can you? No, that's AR. That's, no, that's, that's AR. It would need, it be, it would need AR, a camera yeah. on it. Yeah. And so that's, that's I made, why. That was my one I will send you, I made a 360 degree uh, video of walking through Arl, uh following oh, really? in the footsteps Arl. of Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. So you That's might awesome. enjoy that. Yeah. So we saw. Yeah. So, right. And actually, I would say one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done with VR is simplest thing in the world is look at those kind of 360 degree photos, essentially, or videos too. But, well, no, videos too. Yeah. Um, New York Times does this where you, it's just a, you could do it with cardboard. You could do it with daydream view. It's just with a phone, but you can look around as the stuff is happening right. around you. It's right. This is the, the guy jumps from the stratosphere or whatever. Right. So I just hold um, the, I have that yeah. Samsung gear 360 yeah, the camera ball just camera hold it over yep. my head as we're walking through you hear the audio you hear the guide and stuff you can see the night cafe yeah, but it's not a fix that you can look around that's what that's the right, point of that's it that's why you, i don't yeah. have to aim yeah. it i just hold it up yeah but yeah. i mean the viewer can look can yeah, turn this so you head don't, and see. right you don't want to look down because you'll see me but other than that <laughs> yeah. it's no, that's it. cool so it's I like mean, you're on the tour with us yeah that's really neat you can't smell the baguettes sorry <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. That's going to be the smell of sensor will be the next uh, big accessory for these things. So I'm just, you know, the, and these are like, the Acer is like two ninety nine. Is that what we're talking about? I'm going to say three ninety nine. Three ninety. Okay, yeah. so they're not that much less expensive. Well, that's the thing. Like the price, so since Microsoft announced this, the price has been dropping. And very recently, the price dropped pretty dramatically, right? For the other guys, um, yeah. And I think that that's them reacting to windows mixed reality and that's it kind of benefits everybody um but i just don't i don't know you know the 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 ar thing that mary joe was talking about where you you know it's like an ikea app where you kind of envision right. what yeah. your a couch would look like in your actual room mm -hmm. um that's a neat thing it's fun right but you're not going to do hololens for that you're going to have it on your tablet right where you can stand yeah. around with your family and be like oh look at that you know and once you see that kind of use of that technology, you realize that's the the right way to do it, or the mainstream way. That's that's, yeah. that's how this stuff's popular. Right. Uh, VR, it's, you know, it's different. I mean, it's it's more immersive. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have that field of view problem like you have on HoloLens. It's all around you. But you also can't walk around because you kill yourself. You know, you can't see anything. <laughs> right. your, view, your view is completely occluded. That's yeah. I, that, by the way, is one of the biggest problems. Is that mm -hmm. yeah? Because in again, again, in almost every game, you, movement is, is like a big part of the game. There are right. some, um, uh, geez, what's it called? There's a shooter that Peter uh, was talking about, and I got to experience where it, it's like a bullet time thing where it slows down, super yeah. hot. Or yeah, it's so something. weird looking because they don't fully color it in. It just looks like line. Yeah, so it's kind of geometric shapes. Yeah. It looks like a yeah. like a fashion People vehicle. like it, but. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say, I mean, so when they fire at you, 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 you move like you, you yeah. flinch, like it's very realistic <laughs> and you moving like that causes the thing, you know, if you do it right. correctly to go it over moves. your shoulder, it's, yeah. it's very effective. Uh, and yeah. that's with like, seriously, like it looks like 320 by 240 graphics. Like it's not it's graphically simple, rich at all, but it's still like very that. effective. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, maybe he'll get here before the end of the show and I can wear it for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. 
OneDrive Files on Demand. You didn't do that yet. Oh, yeah. We should talk about that. What is that? The OneDrive Files yeah, on Demand. This is the one curiosity so far. I know. Right. So this is one of the biggest new features of the Fall Creators update, which is OneDrive Files on Demand. It's supposed to be the replacement for OneDrive placeholders. And um, I so that was the first thing I thought, okay, that's something I, I want to see now that I've got yep. the Fall Creators update. And I can't get it to work. I cannot. They, they, Microsoft's no one, even no published a whole list of instructions and I can't, I still can't get it to work. <laughs> yep. What's so, what's yep. the solution? There isn't one, is there? <laughs> no, it requires an update to the OneDrive app. Um, I don't think that's out. Do you? <clears throat> Though the funny thing is like on some computers, I actually have this and on most mm -hmm. I do not. And so I checked okay. this, I just did this today. If you, get into OneDrive settings, you'll see an option, hopefully you'll see an option called Files on Demand. It says save space and download files and use them. So I, I turned this on on this computer today. And, you know, on most computers, well, on yeah. all computers, I'm, I'm syncing some subset of my OneDrive storage to each PC, and it's basically mm -hmm. parts of my documents folder. Well, the thing is, you know, when I go into it now, what I can see in OneDrive is my documents folder, and then I can see the two mm -hmm. folders under that that I'm syncing stuff within and that's it. Like, I, yeah. I'm not getting more than I had before. So I don't, I mean, other than like a status column that shows mm. you the sync status, uh, which I actually find kind of annoying, but, you know, whatever. Um, I don't I, even see the option on my version no, of OneDrive. Are you, are, okay. So in other words, you are you looking at it now? No. So if you go, if you right click on that OneDrive icon and go to settings. I did. Yeah. And if you go to the settings tab. Yep. I did that. The bottom block or whatever should say files on demand it doesn't yeah so you've got an even earlier version yeah That's i do weird. and I'm i tried to update it from the I store don't know, i don't know why <laughs> i tried to update it from the store too and i couldn't yeah so yeah, yeah. so to be fit to be clear this requires both 1709 the create fall creators update and an updated OneDrive app which comes out at the same, roughly the same time. So maybe you just don't have the late, latest so. OneDrive. Yeah. I think this yeah. is the type of thing that within a day or two actually just updates on its own. Because yeah. the OneDrive mm -hmm. desktop application, which is what this is, is uh, it's unclear. <laughs> you know, where, yeah. where do you get this thing from? You know, it's right. Uh, and if you're on Windows 10 S, for example, you wouldn't be able to download the OneDrive desktop right. app and try to install it. Where you couldn't even do it. So, right. It's it, right now. It's an open mystery. I have a link in the notes that. Uh, a bunch of people from Microsoft have put on Twitter saying, if you just follow these instructions, this will get it going. And um, it yeah. doesn't, from my experience. Um, no. And it's a little curious because, like Mary Jo said, this is one of the biggest, most anticipated features of Windows yeah. 10 Fall Creators Update. And for our <laughs> audience, this is the one they're like, hey, um, I specifically upgraded to this so I could get this feature. Where is it? Is there anything we have to change in settings in Windows itself to turn it on? In Windows settings? That's no, I don't think so. No. Hmm. No. No, OneDrive is kind of a self-contained thing. In fact, it's funny when you search for OneDrive in settings, nothing comes up. Yeah. So here's somebody, Rambling Geek, who's listening, said, I had the same issue on my desktop. I downloaded the client and then the checkbox appeared. I think I downloaded yeah, the check, Well, the so by the way, I have the checkbox, but it still doesn't yeah. get me the full view of my OneDrive oh, okay. storage. The, the point of this yeah. is that if you go into OneDrive and File Explorer, you should see everything, even the stuff that's right. only up in the cloud. And I'm not seeing that. That's right. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's, I don't know why. I get it now. What it does, I understand now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. It's confusing. Uh, let's take I'm a thinking break. thinking a week from now, this won't be a problem anymore, but yeah. it's just one yeah. of those. Just, you know, they, both have so they both have to be updated. Yeah. yeah. Redstone 4 coming up. Uh, I, Microsoft announced, yes, we are about halfway to Windows on ARM. Uh, and my, Microsoft uh, Xbox One X is now in stores, but not to buy. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Just a goggle. Just a goggle. Just a ogle and goggle. <laughs> our show today brought to you by our friends at Rocket Mortgage. Quicken Loans is the best lender in the country. They are fantastic. Number two in the nation, $92 billion in loans. Number one in your hearts. Just look at all those J.D. Power Customer Satisfaction Awards every year, year after year. Nice. So now they, you know, best lender in the country, they're looking to see how they can make the experience even better. And they look at people like us and they say, you know, there's people, I don't understand them, but there's people who don't want to go to the bank 
to get a loan. They don't want to go through their paperwork in the attic to figure out, you know, get their pay stubs and their bank statements. They they just don't they don't just want to do it all online, weirdos. No, they didn't say that. But they did make Rocket Mortgage for us weirdos that just want to do it all online. They completely online mortgage approval process. I love it. I, I don't want to go to the bank. I don't want to go through papers. I just want to do it. And because it's all online and it's completely computerized, it's much faster than the old way of doing things. Here's how it works. You go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Answer a few simple questions. They'll say, is this you? And you say, yes. They'll say, do we have permission to uh, pull your financial records? You say, yes. And they have trusted partners with all the big banks and, and everybody. Now they have everything they need. You don't have to give them anything more. And within minutes, they're going to crunch the numbers. And based on your income, your assets, your credit, they're going to come up with a loan that's tailored, that's just right for you. You choose the down payment. You choose the term. You choose the, the rate. And bada bing, bada boom. In minutes, you're ready. You're approved. You've got the loan. You can buy the house or you can refi. You, you know, there's no commitment. Go through the process. See if, you, see if it's, they've got what you want. Then you say, okay, I'll take it or not. But why not do it today? Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. You'll apply simply. You'll understand fully. There's no mystery. Then you can mortgage confidently with the best mortgage lender in the country, Quicken Loans. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. If you're not buying today, bookmark it. Have it ready. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS. Consumeraccess.org number 3030. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. We thank them so much for their support uh, for Windows Weekly. With Polly and Mary Jo, who have both recently acquired new homes. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, uh, I, I have to copy everything she does now. Yep. yep. Are you going to get a cat? Is that next? <laughs> yeah. You, you might be getting a, a couple, dog. A dog? Ooh, you get a dog? Really? I bribed my daughter. Um, I told her that if she got on the honor roll, I would get her a dog because she's been pastoring me for about <laughs> oh, 11 years. And I thought, awesome. well, this is a safe bet. Nope. Oh, idiot. You gave her you gave <laughs> her yeah. Well, that's the gift that keeps on giving, Paul. Yeah, it sure is. Especially when she goes away to college, college and I'm still cleaning up dog poop in the backyard. Just be you and Stephanie and the dog. Yep. Yep, I'm going to invest in a plastic bag company. <laughs> I, uh, a, I have a good source for pooper scoopers. Okay. <laughs> I'm sad to say I might need that eventually. Actually, we had them on, um, on the new screensavers. It's actually... Uh, of course, dog food by subscription. And they tailor mm -hmm. it to your dog exactly, and it comes... At the, there's actually a special scoop. So you you give the dog the food by the scoop. That way mm -hmm. they know when you're almost out, so you don't have to order it or anything. It just comes based mm -hmm. on how many scoops you've used. But in the box, they also throw in some extras, including some very nice poop bags. <laughs> <laughs> also especially tailored to the size of the scoop. They get it. <laughs> Get it both ways. Yeah, they it's, got it uh, in and out. It's all it's metrics. It's big data, baby. Oh boy. It's all about the big data. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. Get a small dog, I'm telling you. That's uh, that was my point. I mean <laughs> I'm thinking about like a rabbit pellet sized dog. Can we get one of those? Yeah. There I've seen you know, something the cats could stuff. take so down cute. if they had. Yeah, to. they look like little hamsters. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, our S4 Fall Creators update is here. It's done. Now we can get on to the real issue at hand. What's next? Exactly. Mary Enjoy your one day in, uh, with the previous version <laughs> of Windows 10. We're moving on. Yeah. Uh, there, this has been, well, we still, insiders have been we, getting it for a while, right? They've been getting a few builds sort of, of it, but it's still so early. It's not like you're seeing any yeah. real features in this thing yet. It's uh, just speaking little, of which, by the way, still, when are we yes. going to find out the new features, right? This thing's supposed to come out in March, maybe April. I know. Normally, yep. right around now would be the time they divulged what's happening. They did this with the Creators Update. Yeah, the Creators Update last year. I, I skipped myself. Did you hear that? Anyway. Era. So when are they going to do it? I, I keep hearing they're going to do it next month. But I don't know where. Do you think going to be an event? Where? I don't know if there'll be an event or if they'll just do like, hey, here's a blog post. Here's some of the stuff. You know, I, I think you were right. Mm -hmm. They got a little gun shy, I think, after they started get showing us the features in each of these releases and then they didn't come <laughs> to fruition. <laughs> Let's <laughs> see like, how this oh, one we develops. didn't say that, did we? Oh, yeah, we did. Okay. Well, yeah. 
So we know Timeline well, actually, probably will be in there and Clip, Cloud Clipboard will probably be in right. Redstone 4, right? Because they both missed Redstone 3. But I don't I mean, know if we know anything the else. The timing is interesting because at next build, yep. this will have shipped. Right. Right? Pretty much regardless Unless of the build timing, is earlier. This, yeah, right. Unless they put it in March or something. Yeah, yeah. But I think they've got to tell people soon because this, the big features are going to start showing up pretty soon in the insider right. builds. Um, yep. I would yep. guess soon. I would guess in the next couple weeks, maybe. Interesting. Okay. But yeah, so far, what was the thing? Last week there was a build and there was like Cortana collections yep. in there and some fixes and not a whole lot else, right? Redstone 4. Is there stuff under the I mean, what? Why, <laughs> there's got to be something in there. Why would you do it? Is there stuff on the Well, hood? they don't always put them into the builds, right? Um, obviously, right. they're working on other stuff. Uh, Raphael right, yeah. found Timeline in an earlier RS4 build, so it is there. Mm -hmm. They're just not exposing it yet. Um, and then and they're yeah, doing Cortana work in the, in the one core, maybe Andromeda OS stuff under underneath that no one is seeing surfaced up to the top of the operating system yet, but they're doing things. We just aren't really seeing the features yet. How does Microsoft do this? I know that don't they have like alternating teams for major update, major Windows releases, right? Like the so you know it's, it's funny you just said that because they used to do major then minor then major yeah, then minor, right? They don't do like that a anymore. TikTok thing, right? They don't really, right. but I feel like we're all, we're kind of doing that again now. Yeah, they're not. I mean, they're never going to admit to that, though. No. But yeah, like you just said, right. Paul, you thought you thought the spring update was small, and this one's major. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know which one I thought was more major than the other. I thought they're about the same, but I think I think they're kind of doing that now. But the, you're right; they yep. will never say that. Yeah. And is this? Uh, I mean, the people who do this are these the same people who are doing the fall creators update? Like the Windows yeah. 10 team is the same team all mm -hmm. the time because it didn't right. like when yeah. they went from eight to ten, they had a new team in place, or no? No, not it's really. I mean, it's the same people. I guess well, executives yeah. changed. There was a leadership transition, yeah. obviously, yeah. and I'm, just, you know, people certainly up and down the chain kind of came and went. But the reason I mentioned that yeah. Apple is known with iPhones to have a yeah. two-year cycle, and they so they have two mm -hmm. teams, and oh, really? so there's a team working on this year's phone and a team working on next year's phone. Or so they're like Star Trek movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no Star Wars movies. Yeah, no Star Wars movies. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars movies. <laughs> so kind of yeah. And I yeah. just was, um, I, I, but now, obviously, Microsoft we, doesn't do updates. That, well, maybe they do. No. I mean, well, they it's, used it's, to. Windows they used is a to take people layer. off teams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Remember, yeah. in the old days, like if something wasn't done, they would move people. Like, okay, everybody, get off this project right. now and move right. over here and work it's, on it. But I, think I don't it's think it's partly I don't to think avoid burnout because you have such yeah. a rush to get True. this next thing out. And then well, you just want to take it easy for a while. It's of course, right. Of course. But I think, but. But part of the Windows as a service model, it, it, although I don't believe this is true in, you know, actuality, you know, should be that you don't suffer from that as much, right? Because you're always iterating. It's you just know, your day job. You're just constantly well, working on Windows. I mean, technically speaking, it's it's always going to be a big deal when something goes out to the public. But the reality is um, the Fall Creators update is not this one thing that happened all at once. It's something that was kind of dribbled out over the past six months, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes there were big releases, to the Windows Insider program, where we got several or more than several, many, you know, many new features, and some, you know, some were kind of small, some mm -hmm. were non-existent. They were basically bug fixes. But, you know, it's not like we woke up on Tuesday and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, what is all this stuff? You know, there were no surprises. <laughs> this stuff yeah. had been kind of coming out over time. So I would say that the people who are responsible for um, rolling out Windows 10 publicly are not the same part of the Windows team that are working on the next release, but those guys are the ones who worked on the previous release too. So mm -hmm. this, uh, it's still kind of segmented, but you mm -hmm. you kind of don't, you get down times, but it's not those huge peaks yeah. and valleys like I it used to be. Love, I don't, I, maybe I'm asking for something you guys already know, but I just think it would be really <laughs> interesting to talk to Donna or somebody mm -hmm. about, I mean, this, the structuring the, of a massive... The hamster wheel nature yeah, of this. Yeah, well, just the structuring yeah. of a massive software yeah. project with hundreds right. of millions of lines of mm -hmm. code and a, kind of a, you, continually being modified on the fly as the plane's in the mm -hmm. air. And all of that, I mm -hmm. think, is is really kind of a miracle of modern yeah. engineering. I mean, it's like... 
-hmm. building a bridge, but you never finish. Yeah. Right, listen, I, I had this argument with an Apple fan in the mid-1990s where at a party in the San Francisco Bay Area, I, I, I inserted myself when I heard someone explain how Apple had way better engineers than, Apple, than Microsoft did. And I was like, excuse me, let me get this straight. Apple makes five, seven different machines. They control the operating system and the hardware. And Microsoft controls none of that. There's a billion different combinations of PC hardware in the world. You know, the fact that Windows boots up at all every day is a miracle. <laughs> okay? And the fact that the entire world relies on this software it's pretty amazing. is the lie to what you just said. Yeah. You know, the fact yeah. that this works at all is astonishing. You know, right? Now, you flash forward to today. I where think that all the time, by the way. <laughs> it's incredible. Like, they, it makes no sense that this monolithic legacy code base is being continually updated. The fact that the entire world has not ground to a halt is perhaps the biggest miracle of it all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It is mm -hmm. astonishing. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. big, it's a big thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, I'm not saying it's like pyramids in Egypt big, but it's pretty close. <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah, plus they've just, they've freed up all those people who are working on Windows Mobile now probably because oh, they're, Done with that. Yeah, those guys um, were, um, so maybe they move them to Windows now. Um, I'm looking to work for on. someone with Silverlight skills to um, help us with the photo <laughs> app. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just know that's either. you know. I, I, does it ever been documented? I mean, it, it, or do you guys already know this? And I'm just asking for something everybody knows, or is it? No, I, mean, talked I about think it. they're pretty. They're, I think they're also pretty secretive about it too, right? I mean, well, it might be secret sauce, right? Uh, although I imagine yeah. because there's enough cross politicization between um, engineering teams that you know when somebody comes on the team, they can say, "Well, let me tell you how we did it at Microsoft." This mm -hmm. is this is a cultural thing, you know. Mary Jo earlier in the show was talking about how Panos was saying that they get the guys from Office and the guys from Windows and the guys from hardware, and they all kind of talk together and look over things and they make decisions and everything. It sounds a little bit trite, but the truth is, like for this entire company to be doing what it's doing, they all have to be on the same page, right? right. Um, you could picture a Windows organization in a different Microsoft or an Office organization in a different Microsoft kind of digging their heels in and saying, no, right. that's not how this software works. Right. You can't do that with Windows, right? They did, in fact, um, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure. But I mean, the, yeah. the fact that they're doing this kind of iteration across all their products and services, um, is astonishing, right? Especially in the cases of these legacy code bases, especially Windows, but also I would say Office as well on Windows and Mac. I mean, it's it's incredible, you know. Well, and I'm it shouldn't yeah. work. And, so that's shouldn't that's work. at the that's at the you know CEO level. But then yep. you, I'm sure you've both read a Mythical Man Month, and the challenge is you can't throw yeah. more programmers at a right. Well, that's what I was thinking project. earlier, which, you know, it's like throw some yeah. more guys on it. It's like, eh, yeah. that's not going to work. No. So, and right. there's a, been a lot of thinking on this. I mean, this is mm -hmm. this is one of the, you know, disciplines of, of modern uh, computer programming is how do you organize mm -hmm. these massive yeah. projects? I don't know how they do this. This is actually, curious, so, you know, that's Think all. about it this way. This is more impressive than cloud computing, right? If you if you looked at software a couple of years ago and you said, look, the, the problem with Office or Windows or a random application on Windows is there's a million or a billion or whatever number of people out in the world running this thing. And we released an update. How do we get it to all those people? And when we get it to all those people, they have to actually go through the process on their crazily different hardware configurations all around the world and upgrade successfully and keep using this thing. And it has to work on all of those computers, Right. So here's mm -hmm. the future. We're not going to do that anymore. We're going to put software in the cloud. And instead of updating like a million or a billion different endpoints, we're going to update once up in the cloud. And everyone gets it automatically because mm -hmm. all they need is an internet connection. Mm -hmm. They don't have to update the software. That makes sense. That that makes sense. I think that's how you sell software, the cloud on developers, whatever. But now what you're saying is, you know, this cloud-based thing is awesome because we can update all the time. Now we're going to take that and we're going to bring it back down to the client. We're going to install it on all the <laughs> billions or millions or whatever it is. Like, it, that's yep. insanity. Yeah. And they're doing it. Uh, it's insane. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> well, if Chris Capicella or somebody's listening, I would love to do a sh just a show, a whole show. It wouldn't sure. be necessarily Windows with you. Maybe it's our, our triangulation <laughs> show on talking. I remember, you know, we talked, I talked a little bit about this with Don Dodge. I've talked about it. Uh, mm. Don was talking about uh, Charles Simone and No, who was it? Was sure. Charles mm -hmm. Simone. But... So and this is a discipline that is really matured. But I, you're right. Uh, I have I don't you don't hear 
modern companies talk about it so mm. much. We live in a I time mean, Gabe, how they do Gabe it. Gabe All I mean, might be the guy, Gabe, right? Like maybe, you want yeah. somebody on the fundamentals team. Right. Um, also, I would by think the way, at how do you handle this complex? The guy who's been on the Windows team through right. probably a back to Jim Alchin or whatever he's been there for. Yep. Yeah, so he, you know, right. Gabe would be great for that. Yeah. Well, Gabe, if you're listening, I'd love to do that. You could make a case at a company like Microsoft where you say, look, we're going to do things the new way with new stuff. Fine. You know, fine. We, we know we have to, we're going to support the legacy stuff. We're going to kind of ride it slowly out, but we're going to do it the old way with it. And they're not doing that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it really is. Uh, can you be imagine like the meeting where the guy in the back raised his hand, some little millennial guy, probably with a little hat. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we update all the software? Like it's a cloud service. You know, they call security and they brought him outside and beat him up a little bit. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's really, yeah. I find, we live in miracle, miraculous times, though, if you think about <laughs> yes, it. Yes, I mean, for sure. If you think about the amount of, you know, every time I think about how much data Facebook has to provide instantly sure. uh, to, bill, to, you know, 2 billion users, that doesn't right. even, that's mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. And I think it all kind of crept up on us in a way that we don't really we just take it for granted but uh it is really a, the systems yeah i mean this is a notoriously complex thing is uh is managing massive yeah. software projects yeah i don't know are they I, agile do I, they use modified agile do they use some system like that i don't know how they do it i'm curious yeah. I'm sure I don't understand. I really don't. It's uh, it is. Uh, well, they're it using is, GitHub, right? They moved to GitHub, GitHub, right? Yeah. <laughs> all the Windows code is there now, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? That's, that's how they do that's it. That's really interesting. They moved to GitHub. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, no, they use GitHub. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I even that's all that. Oh wow, <laughs> now you explained it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Documentation it is all up. Uh, it's all you can. You can make your own edits. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just let anybody yeah, I mean, commit. Anybody's got no. An and they have you know they have Visual Studio team services and they have a lot of different tools that. They, some some of which they sell, some of which they use in house only, and a kind of a mix of things. There there would be it would be like a very very um, big topic to tackle, but very interesting. I agree, it would be super interesting. I don't yeah, think they would tell us, to be honest. Oh, by the way, you know, every time Satya Nadella mentions the word digital transformation, I think we all laugh a little, we throw up in our mouths, whatever your action is, but it, you know, this is <laughs> sort of like what we're describing here, right? I mean, it's, right. well, it's, it's, you know, it's almost like the uh, OSI model of networking. There's layers and layers and layers. You've got somebody, you know, you've got an individual team that's responsible for the network stack, let's say, or whatever it is. Yeah. And then on top of that, you've got, the, you've got a product manager and a marketing manager. Somebody's figuring out what customers need and somebody's testing it. And on top of that, right. you have the, the, the integration with other parts of the mm -hmm. operating system. On top of that, you have integration with the other parts of the company. You know, and Satya Nadella is sitting at the top saying, you know, this has to work, but I'm sure he's not worrying so much about, you know, uh, yeah. quality control at uh, the, yeah. you know, it's, I just, it's modern. It's, mo it, you know, I'm, I'm probably being foolish because, uh, you know, this is something every massive company has to solve, but it's, o it's always impressed me. And it is, by the way, reflects on the quality of the tools you get from Microsoft. It does. Of course, they make these tools for right. themselves. Yeah, I found I found one time at some com some obs kind of obscure conference, somebody from the office team went up there and explained how Office did it, and uh, I watched uh. the whole presentation. I was like, I can't believe this guy is up there talking about this. And I wrote about it, um, but I've never seen Windows do how something like that. How long ago was that? Oh, maybe like two years ago, because somebody asked him, how do you guys um, keep all the different versions of Office and Sync that you have, like the Office right. for the Mac plus Office for you know, iOS, oh, this, Android. You get into the weeds really quick on this stuff. Oh, Office yeah. is t Windows is tough yeah. for this stuff too. Yeah. I don't know how they keep track of all this stuff. I really don't. Computers, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not really a technical <laughs> they guy. They must but have computers. They must have some kind of, you know, something. <laughs> Database probably, I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Delphi <laughs> exactly. 3. I don't DBase know. 4? Yeah, is that what yeah. you're using? <laughs> No, but it only comes up for me because I'm I'm looking at it. they just finished the fall creators update and bam they're right on to the next thing and uh, I don't know you want to just take a break here's an idea think, yeah take, take a break. the next six months off how does that sound take we don't break. need new stuff just yeah <laughs> just oh, yeah. stop really it's crazy but it kind of was I mean I guess it I don't know maybe it never was that way but you had five years between Windows releases well this, remember Leo yeah. um, <laughs> they used to call this internet time right yeah that's that phrase is twenty years old. Yeah. yeah, and we are literally living. It's the, not the right word anymore, but I mean, it's that's what this is. It's like the the hyper speeding up of the schedules, um, mm -hmm. and you never get to rest. 
Because you can rest, I guess, if you want. Like Apple could take a year off from iOS, but guess what? Android's not going to take a year off. Or Google's mm-hmm. not with Android. I mean, you know, this is the, it's, it's great. Like we're all, it's like a, it's just like an ever escalating yeah, war. That's why these people are young and they burn out so young and yep. they, they retire mm-hmm. at 40. <laughs> They're tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Sure. I'm done. And now we got to do it all for ARM. You know, I now. can't wait. This is going to be the best one yet. So this came from Microsoft. This is not speculation. No. What'd they say? Right. So there was some Qualcomm event, annual 5G summit in Hong Kong this week, I guess. Um, and there was a Microsoft uh, program manager there who was talking about where they're at in work with the OEMs on the Windows on ARM PCs. So the, the Microsoft guy said, yes, they're still coming in December. You know, la- we announced them December a year ago. We said they'd be here in a year. Some of them are going to be out this year. Um, they're going to be based on the new Snapdragon 835 processor. Um, Microsoft's already testing this on hundreds of devices. And it's not clear if he means just like hundreds of devices from like four companies or hundreds of devices from like hundreds of companies. Right. Um, but the biggest thing he said is we're seeing multi-day battery life. Yay! Yeah. I know. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, that's not surprising. Well, I mean, that's what you get. If- yeah, I was going to say, that makes sense when you think about the battery size, right? right? I mean, we I get know. a full day um, from this tiny yeah. battery in a phone. Yeah. yeah. Like this guy said, I don't even take my charger with me. I charge it every couple of days. It's that kind of battery life. How awesome Imagine. would that be if this is really happens. You would be, <laughs> look, I'm sorry. There's no PC owner in the world that would trust that, right? You would take yeah. years to get yeah. accustomed to that form of trust. We just, there's no way. How many yeah. times have you gotten on a plane and you pull your bag out and it's warm and you're like, oh, and like the battery's <laughs> dead or whatever because it was running. Like, you you know, I cannot wait yeah. for this to be a thing. I know. I know. Yeah. So, um, there, it sounds like there are all systems go. The part I'm the most interested in seeing is the emulation piece that they talked about, you know, that you'll be able to yeah. run yep. Win32 apps and emulation on this. I wonder if that'll be out right out of the gate or what's going to happen Which, there. Well, it has to be, right? I mean, I, I would think. can't imagine shipping a version of Windows that can't run Windows apps. That would be insanity. Oh, uh, except... Windows They're 10 S and, yeah, <laughs> and also um, remember Intel was kind of hinting there was going to be some legal dispute over this if this came to be. So I don't know if it kind of went nowhere, huh? It did kind of go nowhere unless they're waiting for them to ship the first Quark devices. Qualcomm ain't afraid of court, man. They live in court. <laughs> they're not. That's true. They're not afraid. Well, <laughs> you know, look, Microsoft, right? Leo doesn't have Windows 10 S on it, but he's he's running a laptop that's shipped with a version yep. of Windows that doesn't run those apps already, right? Right. So, yep. what if that laptop couldn't run those apps, but it got three days of battery life? Mm, right. That would make you're it making, worthwhile. Yeah. Now yeah. you're talking about a different equation. Um, I've considered a lot of giving would up choose Chrome that. because everybody yeah. knows yep. Chrome's a battery hog, even though I love sure. Chrome. But just to get better battery yeah. life, right? I would say yeah. that Chrome uses the battery better than other apps. I wouldn't say it was a battery hog. It's more of a battery user. Yeah, because you spend a lot of time <laughs> in it, right? So, yeah. No, it's a battery hog. It's um, <laughs> but uh, this is this is get, this is very interesting, right? Because I I think we all yeah. sort of felt like the ARM based devices would get great battery life. But what's great battery life? Yeah. I mean, like twenty percent better, twenty five percent, you know? Exactly. Um, yep. Yeah. We have la- most of the laptops I test get in the eight, nine, maybe nine hours if you're lucky ish battery life um, yep. in real world terms. Um, uh, the Surface Book 2 supposedly gets 17 hours, which I think we can agree in real life terms is probably <laughs> three or four hours, um, or however you want to measure that. <laughs> yeah. But, like, you know, days of battery life. I know. Interesting. It would make It'd sense. Cool. Though. I mean, that's why you go to ARM. That's why you go right. to. It is risk. literally yeah. why you go. To, yes, right. And yeah. when you couple that with the always-on connectivity, and that thing you were describing, which is kind of the big question, um, actual Intel x86 app compatibility. I mean, mm, I know. Mm, yeah, you know, I mean, we'll see. People talk about a Surface phone, but really, in some ways, this is how you get back into mobile. Because yep. Yep. Exactly. you put the arm in there, and now you can, if you want, you could do a pretty small form factor. Right. 
Well, remember Terry Myerson told me a year ago we're working on we're working with OEMs on six, ten, and fourteen inch uh -huh. display categories. Six inches. <laughs> I just looked at that size. quote again, and you'll notice there is no such thing as a surface device with any of those screen sizes. No, there is not. Curious. Hmm. <laughs> so Curious. far. Mm -hmm. Brad was saying today that he has heard that this Surface Mobile thing might be a courier type device with two screens. Yeah. And, I mean, that's uh, kind of what a lot of people were thinking. Or a foldable screen, you know, yeah. um, something Look, like that. Style, uh, obviously yeah. Surface Pen compatible, student yep. note-taking type thing. Yep. Kind of yep. like Surface Mini, but makes sense. It's interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then I wonder if they'll still do the telephony piece because that was the thing we kept hearing consistently. Like there'd also be telephony capabilities in it. Right. Yeah. There should so, be. So now who needs to be a, make a phone? You're making one by de facto. I mean, yeah, if, even if you don't call it a phone, yeah, well, you never, what, you never what makes do. it a phone? It's a surface right. device. You don't call it a <laughs> yeah. phone. Right. Right. I do. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, really, uh, the, the, our phones are now as powerful as desktops, and uh, right. yeah. uh, they are the computing device we use more than anything else. The issue really mm -hmm. is UI. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to get something done in a small screen like this without a right. physical keyboard. But I think they're making progress in many ways around this kind of stuff. Um, that, that's that's. I mean, really we're, interesting. I, I feel like we're going to return to that thing. So many companies have tried where you kind of plug your phone into something. It could be a dock yeah. on your desktop. It could be yeah, a Samsung's a laptop form factor yeah. thing. And yeah. you know, when you when you talk about the justification for Chrome OS, for example, a Chromebook is, you know, most people only sometimes need to type. Right. Well, yeah. great. I mean, provide the keyboard for the phone and a screen. You know, it doesn't have to be a. Why, why make it a different thing? Yeah. You know. It's a, it's always been a good idea. It's just that the mm -hmm. systems of the day have never kind of matched up to the need. Yeah. But we're definitely getting there. Well, it's all a UI issue at this point. It's yeah. it's it's yeah. a damn user. Yeah, all the pieces are there. Oh, uh, yeah. Very I you know, and maybe VR is a maybe AR is a solution to that. Maybe mm. I, don't know. I mean, that's I think you I think in the long run, and I'm sure the reason Microsoft looks at ARM for Windows is because you're you have to start looking at different form factors, different ways people use systems they yeah. don't want to be caught off guard as they were with no. mobile right um yeah yeah I, they've I, I they've been pretty explicit about that yeah yeah we should mention qualcomm is a sponsor of some of our shows um let's talk mary joe if you'd like to take a nap this might be a good time or go <laughs> why don't you go no, she's gonna want to hear this oh yeah why i know item two i'm interested in oh Xbox yeah cuphead <laughs> after just two weeks in the market, has already sold one million units. Platinum. That's amazing, And this is a actually. game that's only available on Microsoft platforms, right? Windows and Xbox. And it is so freaking awesome. And by the way, the playability <laughs> long-term on it is great. Wow. It's great. But it's really hard, right? It's really it's hard. hard. That's why it's selling yeah. so well. You know Yeah. It's a great game. It's beautiful. I feel like it's these fun. guys, and in, in, uh, they're not going to do it before the holidays, which is too bad, but they could re-release this mm -hmm. or just update it to let normal people play it <laughs> very easily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it could be a hit all over oh, again. Watch out. You know? Be, you know what I think will happen is they'll do a mobile version of it. It's just some of the platform stuff yeah. nice and easy. Yep. Uh, it would <laughs> easily adapt itself to mobile. Uh, Mike, That's true. Uh, our 14-year-old Michael uh, plays it a lot, and he's gotten yeah. through many of the levels. You know, it's it's very. There's lots of beautiful stuff in it. It's the art yeah. and the music's fantastic. It is. It's one of the prettiest games I've ever seen. Just, and and Mary Jo f picked it three mm -hmm. years ago. <laughs> she said this is going to be a hit. You know, I just She's thought cool. people. You can't. How many first-person shooter games do we really need? Yeah. Don't answer, well, Paul. You're not you're not okay. part of that survey. <laughs> well, his answer is one Call of Duty. <laughs> one every year, Mary Jo. Why do you ask? See? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just think people want some variety. Yeah. That's all. No, I, so that's fun. why we have one every year. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people buy it and don't play it, uh, but just yeah. I do too. mess with yeah. it because it's so beautiful and fun. Yep. Yeah. And then they're like, uh, I, uh, this, right. they're, they, they've sort of reminded themselves incorrectly that this is why I'm not a gamer. And yep. it's too bad because I feel like this thing could be something that normal people could play. Well, uh, the success of it tells me there'll be a lot more. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you're right. Yeah, it's yeah. going to end up being like Angry Birds. It's going to. It's a franchise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you picked it, Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> 
<laughs> and now I'm going to play a little bit of Cuphead, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm just can't stop. Is it on your Surface laptop? Yeah. Nice. I love it. It plays quite well <laughs> on almost anything. Yeah. It is yep. not a, you know... That's actually one of the things I, I think is really cool about it. Yeah. It's I've noticed a, that, too. Even on it's a normal laptop. Well, yeah. well like yours. It, there's no it's not a heavy GPU, CPU on that at all. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Not a heavy CPU game. Yep. Uh, so if I... Because I'm, I'm really excited. Not all of us have the luxury of... Uh, you know, getting, I'm going to stop Cuphead, sorry. Not all, of, <laughs> not all of us have the luxury of having our own Xbox One X in our living room for testing purposes. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can go now to the Microsoft store and try one myself. That's right. So could I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know that it's at every single Microsoft store yet. So you should, if you want to see it, you might want to call ahead and before you go. But um, they are finally putting Xbox One stations, Xbox One X stations, in Microsoft retail stores. So if you want to go check out the new console uh, for yourself, uh, you can do so. And then, of course, you can pre-order it. And they have a whole cool little thing. You can pre-order it, and they'll open the store for you on that you know, the day and go get it or whatever. Um, but you'll be able to do that. So that's kind of cool. I guess that could have been a tip, but there's so much other stuff going on. I just threw it in as a news story. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention with regards to Xbox is that Microsoft obviously has... Uh, cross-play capabilities from Windows to uh, Xbox on certain games, on Xbox uh, Play Anywhere games. By the way, they're opening that up to um, Halo Wars 2 soon, Windows to Xbox, if you're into that kind of thing. But they also uh, recently revamped Minecraft so that across most of the supported platforms, you can actually play against people or with people on other platforms. You could have one guy on the uh, Nintendo Switch and one guy on a Windows PC or one guy on Xbox One and one guy on iOS or whatever. Um, the one platform notably missing from that is Sony's PlayStation 4. There is a version of the Minecraft game on there, but it's kind of by itself now. It's if, if you are a PS4 owner, you can play against or with other PS4 owners only. So Microsoft has kind of tiptoed around this, but they basically came out this week and said, you know, we've talked to these guys a lot about it. We don't understand why they're not allowing this, but Sony has basically blocked this. They're not going to allow PS4 Sony's gamers to blocking play. it? Yeah, they won't, uh, they won't allow it. Dopey, dopey, dopey. So, dopey. I guess they're asking people to complain, <laughs> which yeah. uh, I have. Um, so, that's too bad. Yeah. That's dopey on Sony's part. Yeah, it's really bad. Huh. Well, they may know, I mean, they may know that people who buy PlayStation 4s aren't really Minecraft players or something. I... There's no technical reason this can't happen. Oh, it's no. just, yeah. But you they know, may think it's just not a big market. It's the, ex well, uh, I don't know. yeah, I don't know. I don't, they, maybe it helps Microsoft too much. We were uh, talking a little bit about programming and uh, methodologies. I wanted to mention that on Friday, Philippe Kahn will be on oh, triangulation. Oh, wow. I know, I can't <laughs> wait to interview. What is he like oh, these wow. days? Is he still gigantic in French? I'll let you know. I bet you. <laughs> and he plays a he, sax. He's sailing around. He's a big over, sailor. He? He's an avid sailor. Yeah. I've seen him sail here in the San Francisco Bay. He and his team yeah. are extremely aggressive, high-speed sailors. They're they're not messing around. Mm. Uh, yeah. I I don't know. I, I don't know if they're uh, America's Cup. I don't. It didn't look like an America's Cup boat, but they're very mm. serious in how they sail. And of course, he invented. You know, he was created Borland International, uh, brought mm -hmm. Turbo Pascal to the U.S., yep. uh, which trans really changed how we write software. But mm -hmm. he's had several um, iterations because Borland then went on to do productivity. Remember, they did uh, yep. Yep. A word processor and spreadsheet, and then um, was they it actually Quattro, briefly on the own word right? product. They I think have. they brought that in right for yeah. this week. <laughs> And then, uh, but I don't know yeah. if people know this, but he also invented key technologies that made the camera phone possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, yeah. very interesting fella. Anyway, Friday 3. I guess he's sort of interesting, Leo. Kind what do you mean? Of, maybe important to technology. <laughs> How is he relevant know. to the tech industry? <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't wait to meet him. That's and amazing. I, I no, I'd love will, to meet him. I will bring you, I have his, your Delphi 3 Super Bible. I'll get him to There you go. That. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific. Um, 6 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC this Friday for Triangulation and Philippe Kahn. Our show today brought to you, we're going to get to the back of the book in a second. Our show today brought to you by Betterment. 
I uh, I think you know I've I cannot I'm not allowed due to SEC regulations because you, a person who does an endorsement for an ad can't use that financial product. Uh, but I have made sure that everybody I know is using Betterment. It's a better way to invest. Betterment's advisors are what we call fiduciaries. They don't get commissions for recommending funds. They don't have funds of their own. They are paid to do what is right for you. Betterment is the largest independent online financial advisor designed to help improve customers' long-term returns and lower taxes uh, for retirement planning, building wealth, other financial goals. Maybe you're saving for a house, kids' college education. You go to, in fact, you can do it right now, betterment.com slash windows, and you tell them your goals. You tell them how risk adverse you are, your time frame, that kind of thing. Then they take advanced investment strategies and use the latest technology to deliver a superior product to you. 270,000 customers now because it works so well. Based on what you tell them, Betterment will make tailored recommendations and decisions like how much to invest, how much risk to take, the type of investment account you should have. My daughter's 25. She's she's you know working her first serious job. She's putting money away. She was putting in a CD at a bank. Safe. But boy, the return is un, it's under 1%. So we moved her over to Betterment. She can get great advice. And the thing is, if you start at a young age and you put a small amount aside every month, you're way ahead of somebody who starts 20 years later and puts twice as much away. It's the miracle of compound interest, and Betterment helps you do it right. And they cost less. Low, transparent advisory fees compared to the traditional services. And, and frankly, they have a service that I think geeks would like. And I, this is what Abby's using. She doesn't talk to an investment advisor. She texts them. You have, this is so cool. You do it on the Betterment app. You pay 0.25% a year. That's the annual fee, one quarter of 1%. You get unlimited messaging access to their team of licensed financial experts from the mobile app. That's for most of us geeks. That's the level of involvement I want with my broker. You can, if you want to talk to somebody, you can upgrade and per, for 0.4%, you get unlimited phone access to their team of CFPs. Main point here is the advice you get is the same. The quality of the advice is the same because Betterment is a fiduciary. They work for you, not for the funds. They work for you. Plus, of course, great security. They want you to keep your money and data secure. They have advanced data encryption on everything they do. Uh, Two-factor authentication to protect your account. They do it all right. Now, look, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say investing involves risk. But no risk, no reward, right? So for a free five-minute investment review online, helping you assess your investment accounts, your tax strategies, your fees, your risk exposure, Abby did this. She loved it. Betterment.com slash windows. There's no sign-up required to do the review. Betterment.com slash windows. Then you can make a decision. Is this right for you? I think it is. And I'm telling you, I put my family in it. You know I take it seriously. Betterment.com slash windows. Betterment. Rethink what your money can do. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. I think this would be a time for Paul to give us his... his <laughs> can you hear that sound? His squeak of the week. Is that what a dog? What is that? <laughs> uh, I think my wife is turning on the water so she can oh. water the seeds. <laughs> water the seeds. It's now the time. The watering of the seeds. Now Much like the running of the corn. <laughs> It's a lot of weird stuff in Pennsylvania. Of the anyway, corn, yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the tip of the week is about the fall creators update. Um, if you want to get this thing immediately, you can. And as we pointed out earlier, actually, a lot of people are seeing it right in Windows Update, which is you know actually kind of incredible. So, I'm check that first. It. Yep. Uh, but if you want to force the issue, which you know, as Mary Jo said, you probably shouldn't, but if you want to. Um, you can, and you just go to the Windows download site. You can download the ISOs. You can download the, or use that tool to get the um, install media going on USB, however you want to do it. Um, you just really need the ISO. To double click on it, run setup. You'll upgrade to the latest version. So you can get it. If you want it immediately, you can get it. Um, if, however, you want to defer it, you can. Of course, it's a lot easier if you're running Windows 10 Pro because Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise actually include that functionality built in. I'm just going to look at the screen because it's a little convoluted. But 
If you go into settings, update and security, Windows update, there's an advanced options option. Um, this changed a lot in the creators update. Uh, before it had very different options. But now there's actually an option that says a feature update includes new capabilities and improvements. It can be deferred for this many days. And there's a drop down. And you can actually defer this thing. It's incredible. But for up to 365 days. So if you wanted to take a year and not get this, you could do that. You could put it in one month, two months, whatever you want to do. Um, you can also, by the way, defer quality updates for up to 30, I'm sorry. Yeah, quality updates uh, for up to 30 days, uh, also new to the creator's update. So if you don't think you want it, you, know, you could do that. Um, the other option that would kind of get this done is the pause updates feature. You can pause updates temporarily for up to 35 days. I actually don't recommend that because that will also pause uh, security updates, which are part of those quality updates. Um, you're better off deferring just the feature updates if that's what you want to do. And how long does it oh, take? I'm, sorry. I, I'm, I'm in. I'm about a third of the way through the install. It takes a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so a big. It's, it's a big it's, update. It's an hour or two. Yeah. Um, if you're on Windows 10 Home, however, you will not see this option. In fact, if you click on Advanced Options, or whatever, you'll see a screen that basically has nothing on it. There's nothing there. Well, there's a few things there, but nothing related to this. Um, so unfortunately, you have to go back to that workaround that we've used in the past, um, which is to configure your wireless interface, your wireless adapter as a metered connection. In this case, Microsoft will not down, uh, download updates because it thinks you're paying, you know, for, for the bandwidth. Um, the trouble with that workaround is that it also means you won't get security updates. So perhaps a better option would be you can kind of manually just say no to the update. Um, actually, no, you can't on Windows 10 Home. Never mind. <laughs> this is pretty much it. So Unfortunately, you don't have a lot of good options on Windows 10 Home. Uh, and I assume that's true Windows 10S, although I've not tried on Windows 10S yet. But I will do that. Um, and then as far as the app pick goes, um, I don't... Well, Microsoft Edge Preview for Android is now available. That was something that wasn't out last week, only iOS. But I am going to start a series um, on of Microsoft apps on Android. This is something I've actually written about in the past. But one of the things I've heard a lot from people in recent days, probably because of the Windows Phone news from last week, is that begrudgingly, a lot of Windows guys are now turning to Android because they're, they're finally accepting the fact that Windows Phone has kind of come and gone. And a lot of people seem to be really interested in running Microsoft apps and experiences on their phone. In fact, a lot of people have asked me, why doesn't Microsoft just make an Android phone? And by the way, that's not necessarily a horrible idea. It would be pretty easy and pretty inexpensive to do that. But as it turns out, all of those pieces are in place for anyone to do that right now. You can replace your lock screen, your home screen and launcher, um, your keyboard, your digital assistant uh, with Microsoft solutions. Obviously, you can load it up with Microsoft apps. Um, there's an incredible array of Microsoft stuff that's possible on Android that some of which is obviously on iOS, but a lot of it isn't uh, just because of the nature of Android. So I kind of laid it out in an article where you can see what all the different things are. But I'm going to dive into each one of those in the next few weeks um, and just cover it a little, you know, in a little more detail. Um, the, quickly, the other thing I wanted to mention was, uh, I know we're not doing an audible pick. I just wanted to mention uh, the Dan Brown book, Origins, is out now. This is like the latest Robert Langdon book. And this might actually be of interest to people because these books are actually, you know, they're pretty good, obviously. But this book is actually all about AI and digital assistance and technology. And if you're familiar with Dan Brown and um, his books, he often writes about religion and science and all the issues around that kind of stuff. And it, it ties into that stuff as well. But it's kind of fascinating because obviously Robert Langdon is the central character in the book, but arguably the second biggest character in the book is an artificial intelligence based personal digital assistant called, uh, called Winston. And, um, huh. you know, it's like Cortana or Siri or something. And it, it's actually like a character in the book. It's, 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 it's very interesting. So if you're into this kind of stuff and you're curious about uh, what he sees as the future of this, which is pretty viable, actually. Um, it's not a bad book to check out. Good pick. Mary Jo Foley's got our Enterprise Pick of the Week. I do. I just found out about this. I think it's been available before and they've updated it, but it's amazing. I can't believe they haven't done this before. Hmm. This thing is a cloud service map for AWS and Azure. So what is that? It's actually um, someone from Microsoft took all the cloud offerings from Microsoft and the cloud offerings from Azure and put them side by side so that you can actually see what matches with what. 
And anybody who runs cloud, you know, multiple clouds with different vendors or people like us in the press who are trying to track when one vendor introduces something and then another matches it, this thing is invaluable. I've tried to, I've kind of tried to make this myself before and I couldn't. I just thought, oh, it, it could be a full time job just trying to create this. But now it's already done for you. And the way to find this, the easiest way is to go to Microsoft's Azure site azure.microsoft.com they have a link there for the blog and it's um it's a few a few uh, items down in the blog i think they posted it this monday and it's the headline on it says cloud service map for aws and azure available now it's a you can um, look at it online they've got it available that way or you can download a pdf of this to use and i i already can see i'm going to use this all the time it's fantastic Oh, and I, I, I know I sound like I'm like, wow, but it's 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 um, so helpful because sometimes you see a name of a product uh, and the two products don't have a name that's anything alike. It, it, like, for example, it's a Rosetta Stone for it cloud is. services. It is. Got so, it. like, you know, when when uh, Azure introduced functions, their serverless uh, computing service, I'm like, what is what's the comparable thing in in AWS for that? It's called Lambda. Who would know right, that unless, right, you know, right. you had really studied it. So this tells you everything like that. It gives you compute. It gives you, um, what else, storage, networking, big data and analytics, all those different layers of the cloud. There's tons of entries in this thing. And it's really easy to read, super clear, good descriptions. If you, if you have to manage clouds or you're buying cloud services with these two vendors, you are going to use this a lot. It's funny because some sometimes Amazon uses markety terms and Microsoft yep. uses straightforward terms like Amazon CloudFront is a content delivery network when it comes to mm -hmm. Microsoft. So well, that makes sense. But then sometimes Amazon uses this this straightforward term and Microsoft uses the market, my, right. marketing term like simple storage services or Amazon S3 is block blob. On Azure, <laughs> so you, I see why you need this. Yeah. It's not uh, you do. Yeah, what's Route fifty two? Yeah. What Route fifty three? I don't know. It's a traffic yep. manager. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. That's cool. Yep. That's really cool. Very cool. Yeah, I know. And a free uh, PDF download, which I just downloaded. Yep. Thank yep. you, Mary Jo. Yeah, it's a good one. You got a code name for us? Yeah, the walking cat has been busy over in code name land this week. So he thinks he's found the code names for the Surface Book 2. Um, he thinks one of the two of them is called Py Pyzix, P-Y-X-I-S, and the other is called Zariah. And so he's he um, he also found out that Veil um, is the code name for the new Surface Mouse. So he's he he's been trying to figure this out. He's been going back and forth with Pyxis. me, like, well, why do you think this is Py Pyxis, and why do you think this is this and that. So he found out that uh, Pyxis is a shape of Greek pottery where there's a separate uh, lid. And Panos Pane is Greek. So that I'm like, okay, maybe, you know. Um, but they've had a lot of really weird uh, code names for all their different Surface products. So maybe there is no theme or maybe there is some kind of a theme. I was thinking constellations. Yeah, because Pyxis is a star. Is it, it is? Okay, yeah. Pyxis. Yeah, yeah. Pyxis. Uh, well, I don't know. But is... Yeah, but is Zariah like then? I'm like, oh, what's Zariah then, right? <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, nothing. I don't. Yeah. If they call the Marin the wind Zariah. I don't know. It's not. I don't know. Yeah, but it's cool that he found that. Anyways, he was he was said to me they're called P and Z, and do you know what they are? And I'm like, no. And he said, I think they're Pixis and Zariah. Boy, so. it feels Pixis is a uh, is a star in the constellation uh, Virgo. I don't, but that doesn't help you with Zariah, so I don't... I think they're random, and I think that's the point. I don't think there's a theme. Oh. You know? Damn it. We're, you know, it's not like back when they did, like, city days, or right. city names, or whatever, right. for Windows. Like, I, these things are all over the map. Yeah, because Vail could be Vail, Colorado. V-A-I. Mary Jo's frozen. Well... Unless she's holding the, the most incredible smile somehow. <laughs> She's this is she's this spoofing is us. This is her mysterious look. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> did Sirachi do that? He did. Oh. <laughs> I was joking. That's I was what it was. Thinking, but... He's been so great this whole show. And then suddenly yep. 
Boom. He said, he enough. You've been laptop. doing that for two Still hours. Still those two losers. Time to pay attention to me. Okay, Mary Jo Foley, it is time for your beer pick of the week. Yes, my beer pick of the week is a tribute to that mischievous cat of mine whose name is Soraki. <laughs> he just unplugged your laptop for you. He did. Um, so there's a beer from Weird Beard, which is a London brewery that's called Sirachi Faceplant. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yep. And the reason it's called that is Sirachi is the name of a hop, a Japanese hop. And that is what I named Sirachi for. And the, that's the kind of hop in here. Um it's, and the reason it's called face plant is because it's so strong. It's a very strong IPA. And in England, they don't make their IPAs that strong. But this one is around 8%. And um, yeah, it's good. It's very malty, uh, you know, more like a British style, but also still hoppy and bitter, all those good things. And um, I got it from a friend, Steve Brown. So thank you, Steve, for the Yay, beer. Yay, so <laughs> face plant. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you take tasting notes when you taste beers, Mary Jo? I mean, you have a notebook that you write it down in. And no, like sometimes that. I just will usually put them on untapped oh, and yeah. comment yeah. on what they are. Yeah, actually, untapped's That's perfect good. for that, and I know Paul does that too. It yeah. is, yeah, yeah. It's made yeah. made to do that. It is. Well, you made it back just in time to finish the show. I, <laughs> I was hoping I was going to be able to do my Chardonnay pick of the week, but fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, next time. How about that? We we, we we're run out of time here, Paul. Uh, <laughs> Paul Thorat yep. is at Thorat.com. That's his uh, blog, T H U R R O T T.com. It's really more than a blog. It's a it's a news a Windows uh, news site, and he has lots of help from many people, uh, including Brad and Mary Jo. Actually, mm -hmm. that's on the Petri uh, site uh, that Mary Jo fills in there. Is that up and running yet, Mary Jo? No, they're st still kind of in the midst of fixing that up. So okay. we're we're in a little hiatus from that right now. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Paul's also got plenty of books. And Professional creatives. differences, I think, is what she's trying to say. <laughs> creative differences. <laughs> uh, yeah, creative differences. Yeah, Paul's, uh, Paul's <laughs> books, including The Field Guide to Windows 10, are available at leanpub.com. Mary Jo Foley mm -hmm. hangs her hat at ZDNet. Her blog is all about Microsoft.com. Between the two of them, I don't know anybody better equipped to comment each week on Windows. Every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. 1800 UTC. If you want to stop by and say hi, you can also join us in the chat room, irc.twit.tv, or download shows after the fact, twit.tv slash WW, or subscribe in your favorite podcatcher. That way you won't miss an episode. We'll see you right back here next week on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. <laughs>